start streaming and play the funky music. White boy. Serving of banana leaf rice. In Anglojack. Oh, you can buy durians in a rack sold in Kuala Lumpur. And uh, as usual, we'll have hobbit talking all over the music. Oh, it's a shit theme tune. No one cares. They're more interested about Malaysian cuisine. Did you burp? You got a burp afterwards. That's all I know about Malaysian cuisine. You got to beat your wife afterwards to say that you approved of the dessert, like Stan Collymore did. But just a gentle beating, not a severe one, like Stan Collymore did. Yeah, exactly. Just to let them know you love them, and that is what secular Quranism mm. is all about. You want to give them a collie more, not a greenwood. I, ju I just need to do a five-hour stream about like uh, the correct way to beat a woman with Claire Core. And we're live. And yes. We're live. Hello, we're Claire Core. Yes. Use the inside thought. Use the outside thoughts. Oh, uh, yeah. The 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 quiet voice remains quiet. Welcome to another Fortean words. I, I need to I need to perfect my. Uh... Carlsberg voice. Do you remember? Was it Orson Welles used to do the Carlsberg adverts? Mm, I think he had died by then, but um, it was a very, yeah, very low to toned voice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very multicultural. Do you remember when men on adverts used to talk like this? And now you go, "Hi guys, I I'm trying to sell you uh, something on the internet." They used to. Oh, they used oh, to they they, they want the sound to things you... to shave their balls. <laughs> they used to try and make you smoke as well. Yeah. And we're buffering, apparently, according to Sergeant Oink Winson. Are we still buffering? <laughs> uh, hey? no, we yeah, I was just thinking... Um, me. I think that's. I think that uh, might be St. Sergeant Oink Winson. Yeah. I, um, that sounds like a you, You're problem. speaking of the, the, the smoking yeah. advert, so uh, I was just speaking of the silk cut cinematic one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Smoke we gonna fag. do. And I think we're you. gonna do another uh, another advert break, aren't we, on Saturday night? Oh, I'm I'm quite happy to do another commercial break Saturday evening. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Turn your microphone up this time, though, because I could hardly hear you last time. Oh, that, that, that's that's probably for the best. Yeah, you we, were we let the adverts do the talking. You were being a bit eeyore again, weren't you, Hobbit? What? Not during the Saturday stuff. You were. You were like, ooh, no. we'll do it. Yeah, well, that's because I was. Um, <laughs> Sleep you deprived and your, such. You spit your dummy out. You were doing it, Hobbit. I, 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 I had five hours sleep the night before, and then yeah. I needed a lat nap. And Margaret um, Thatcher used to run the country on fucking three, Hobbit. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah. she's a woman. She hasn't got much going on in there. They don't need much sleep. All they need to know is how to do the dishes. <laughs> she was running the country, Hobbit. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, sure she was. I'm yeah, sure she yeah. Was. I'm sure there was no men behind to make cleaning up her messes. She did it all by herself, isn't she clever? Right. So, so silk cut. What are, we, what are we here to talk about tonight, Ian? Silk cut. Ensign and hedges of gold. Cut. There we go. That I, little I place admit. there. I always preferred uh, Margaret uh, Red. Oh yeah, Canuck Chase, so that's why we're here tonight, eh? Mm. So, yeah, we're going to look at Canuck Chase today, so it's going to shit you up, and we're going to tell you uh, tell you what goes on there. So. Not to be confused with Chase Springs, summer, spring I water. Might, I think we might do a, uh, mm. do a spoopy, spoopy visit to it. We could do, yeah, brought to you Find by Malbra Are we going to hunt down man the bear pig? Yeah, we're oh, gonna I was going to say, we're going to get that little fucker once yeah. and for all. So. It brought brought to you by Woodgate Premium Cider. Mm. Yep. Yeah. And Lambert Two and pound. Butler. Ah, oh, I, I was almost sick smoking Lambert and Butler once. <laughs> well, and they four, were a bit and cheaper. four transits with a light on inside. Um, mm. they were a bit cheaper than normal fags. So as fags got more and more expensive, then they were the ones you bought before you eventually. No, it uh, was moved um, on to Rollies. Oh, yeah, it was Lambert and Butler were cheap, weren't they? What was the Lambert cheap, and cheap ones people used to smoke? Uh, was it Mayfair. Sovereigns? Mayfair I think it was, so yeah, Mayfair and Sovereigns. 
Mm. There was another bland with a blue blue label. What was it now? Oh, I was just going back a bit. They were Royals, Royals. That's the ones I used to smoke. That you yeah. could get twenty four in Embassy. a pack. Embassy. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, but embassies were never particularly cheap, were they? Regal players, which had no filter. Oh, I, I liked I liked the players. Yeah, they, they players, were good. They bit, gave you a bit of amusing, uh, a bit quick. of amusing graffiti I read about once. No, they were the better a, quality the, tobacco. The SAS, the SAS smoke more embassies than the Hurricane Higgins. Yes, that is true. That is very true. And that's a joke from the 1980s for those yeah. not born in the last 20 years. Anyway. Which is most of our audience. Back um, to the um, 1980s. Should we kick on with Canuck Chase? Mm -hmm. We can throw in... Uh, we can talk about fags along the way, but... Uh... God, this may be thirsty for some Chase Spring. Spring hey, Hobbits, did you know Silk Cut had their own music music label? Uh, no, but I do know they had their own cinematic uh, advert. Mm. What Major they used to do... They had their own music label since they weren't allowed to advertise, so they put their logo on the CD. Huh. And um, what they used to do as well was come around... A promotional people would come round to um, pubs and give you free fags. So, nice. yeah, I remember. I remember, I remember I, when I, the man used to come round with a basket and you could buy buy cocker crap well, Yeah. No, I had a silk cut T-shirt and some free fags one night off the uh, off the fag <laughs> people when I was in the boozer. I must and, admit, and the, the only experience I have of silk cut is a mate of mine. She used to roll a spliffs using silk cut ultras. And I just thought to myself, this is a very subpar tobacco. Yeah. And... Well, it's the filter, though, isn't it? It was the filter yeah, that well, made them. That's it. I think Hobbit's saying Ooh. that they used the massive filter to hide the subpar tobacco. Well, that's why I like well, they the didn't. John... They used they used a, they used a um, filter had holes in it, so you wouldn't inhale as much smoke. That's why I liked the uh, the uh, Navy Cut uh, player mm. specials because those ones they had no filter on them. They had to use decent tobacco, otherwise you taste it. Yeah. They, those are good cigarettes. I miss and it. If you ran out, if you didn't have a lighter or matches, you could put the uh, the cooker on the ring on the cooker on, mm. and when it goes yep. orange, you would put the fag on there and light it from there and burn. Your hair also used breath. to have cigarettes lighters in them, which operate in a very similar mm. print just a bit scaled down and I'm, I'm just remembering now one of my favorite cigarettes was the one um my girlfriend's or well, my ex-girlfriend's uh nan yeah. used to smoke uh, uh dunhill beautiful oh, yeah. cigarettes they were lovely yeah um yeah ones that james used bond used to smoke and really? more is it more what are, what are the ones in the green packet the black they meant for more more yeah. women oh, my nan used yeah. to smoke them yeah. Yeah. i uh i Big One day. of my favourite ones, if, if I'm on holiday, because I don't smoke ciggies anymore, but I, I, I mean I do, but I don't go and buy them. But if I'm on holiday, I'll buy myself a packet of uh, Davidoff, because uh, those are mm. very nice. They're fags. Yeah, they, well, they make cigars, but that's mm. uh, that's a different um, brand well, to I Davidoff. I thought they only did perfume. Yeah, so they make perfume, jewellery and Dom's, cigars. Dom's um, in the Bermuda Triangle, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's strange. I'm sure you'll be back. I don't think we should worry too much at this stage. Um, but, but the cigarette Davidoff is a different company. That's Imperial Tobacco. Uh, was that Doctor Doctor Who's enemy? Wasn't it? Oh no, that was Davros. Yeah. Davros. But anyway, Davros, um, Davros. Not to be confused with Stavros. Hello, peeps. <laughs> was there a fire video today, uh, Hobbit? Did you have a fire video? A fire video. Yeah, you make oh, fire yeah. videos, don't you? Oh, hell. yeah, yeah. I, I, I uploaded a video of making a fire. In fact, it was rekindling from yeah. uh, the embers from last night. I've got using furnace site now yeah. or something very similar. And it, it just holds heat all night long. Are we, we going to see, like, you know, when, when, when the Oxford. When the Oxfordshire uh, Mafia come and get you, Hobbit, they're just going to kick your door in and throw water all over your fire up. Mm. You should. <laughs> You well, that's it. It's, it's going to be the Greta Thunberg death squads, mm. and the way yeah. they're going to kill people is with starvation and hypothermia. I got, I got some fire. I'd give her or something like Fucking that. Fucking no, hell! How old it. is Jojo Gizmo? The ice cream man used to sell one embassy in a match for a tanner. Fucking hell! Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, now there is somebody who uh, knows his I bet, stuff. I bet he can play the spoons as well. <laughs> um, but you could do you piss? You can piss on the fire as well if you want to put it out. Not, not in your kitchen. Well, no. It's in your kitchen. It look, well, I've watched the video. It looks like it's in your. It's not your kitchen, is it? No, it's it's my it's my mm. my study. Yeah. Oh, right. Um. Good. Not bad. Just remember the etiquette. Anyway. If you are going to piss in the sink, just make sure you take the dishes out. Yeah. That's, piss in the that's sink. Good eti- that's but... good etiquette. Uh, you're reminding me of the ancient Chinese proverb: mm. "Man who cook uh, pee in carrot water, very economical man. <laughs> man who cook uh, carrot in pea water, very yeah. dirty man." <laughs> But um, no, but back in the eighties, when I was living in, I was living in um, North London Poly student residence, and um, I had a sink in my room, and uh, yeah, that was often pissed into, and uh, <laughs> and I and I used to throw up in it as well because I wasn't, you know, I was only young and I couldn't really hold my drink either, so that was handy for both things. This yeah. is how I know Godwinson's upper class because he's never pissed in the sink. Yeah, of course, <laughs> nothing wrong. I lost my respect for him after that. Wait, he said he's there he is feigning. Yeah, and he's just saying, "Oh, there's something wrong with you, chat. You're all sink pisses are degenerate." I'm like, fuck you, Godson. You're not even a real man. Make sure you turn the tap on afterwards. Don't just leave it there, or don't put the plug in and leave it there. Put the tap on during. Yeah, exactly. Flushing it. Yeah. Maybe maybe pour a bit of mouthwash down there afterwards. Yeah, it's a urinal. Exactly. Yeah. What is As the on? summer it's comes, sink, isn't it? That's mm-hmm. what it is. Exactly. As the summer comes, though, um, what are you going to do then? You maybe you can do fan videos and put the the and put your fan on at different levels as the uh, heat gets higher. Uh, honestly, when it's like that, I open my door and I sit outside and I have like beer which I've uh, frozen in the freezer. Are you going to do crotch videos like uh, SJJ then? No, yeah. because I'm. I'm. Look now. There's nothing. Bro- we, we love our homosexuals, don't we? But <laughs> I, I can't be as faggy as he can be. <laughs> yeah. You can send out some dick pics, though, right? Eh? I'll leave that to Top Cat. Yeah, Top Cat right. was very enthusiastic about S.J. James' uh, crop shots. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, all right then. Uh, Shall we right. get on with uh, Canic Chase? We'll give a bit of background. Oh, thirsty for Canic Chase spring water now. Yeah. All right then. Anyway, all right then. Let's get a bit of bit, bit of background. Then we'll kick off. Um, so, lot to get through tonight. So we'll kick off then. Uh, so Canic Chase, often referred to locally as the Chase, is a mixed area of countryside in the county of Staffordshire, England. The area has been designated as the Canuck Chase Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty and is managed by the for- by Forestry England. It covers roughly 60 square miles. And we see, you see on the map there where it is, just sort of north of Birmingham. So uh, that's where it is there. These days, the area is popular with orcas, ramblers, and wild campers. The thick forest setting has attracted doggers, as in it's a well-known gay cruising spot and is synonymous for anonymous buggery in the bushes. Uh, has, has the wild camping and, and the dogging ever collided in a, in a hilarious but... Uh, I'm sure it has. <laughs> um, yeah, a young couple were camping there and uh, in the middle of the night someone did put their cock through the flaps of the tent. They were just confronted with that sight, nice. uh, so and threw scalding water over it. So let's have a look. Oh, Hobbit! Did um, you know? Um, did you know Costco spring water is uh, from Chase, Chase Spring? Yeah. I knew there was spring water from that area. I wasn't just making yeah. it up. Well, it says it, it, it says it's Litchfield in Staffordshire, so uh, mm. it's close, but uh, close but no cigar, I think. Yeah. It's uh, not a- Staffordshire Water mm. made a twenty million pound bottling plant there a few years ago, so uh, that's it, probably it, what's from. The stream does run by the doggins, the dogging area, so that's why the the water has so got a ev- salty, everybody who's had chase spring with. water has had a bit of jizz in it. Exactly. Just a, a curiosity: is that are they going to name a pub the Dog and Fuck, or is that like mm. you, you know run by millennial woes when it all know this money comes in? It's going to be slap and tickle. Slap and tickle is a bit less offensive, isn't it? The dogging in? Yeah. 
the dog in. No, they're I've just the dog in. As as doing Tesco, selling tap water as bottled water, so they literally did the Peckham Spring bit. Pepper, Peckham <laughs> Spring <laughs> bit. Yeah. Anyway, all right, all right. The area gained notoriety in the late sixties when can- the Cannock Chase murders made national headlines. The remains of three young girls were found on the chase after going missing from the area. Ooh. Along the A34 road between there and Birmingham. Between 1965 and 1967, pervert Raymond Leslie Morris murdered the three girls who were aged between five and seven. Oh. Morris was a motor engineer from Warsaw and was found guilty of the murders in 1968 and was sentenced to life imprisonment. He died in prison in March 2014, aged 84. After serving forty five years, so yeah, I th- um, I think I listened to a um podcast, yes. and I think he was a member of the what they called the Wolf Pack, which was like a group of paedophiles. Uh, Sydney Cook was one of them. I think he was mates with Sydney Sydney Cook. I'm not sure. Mm, Sydney Cook created uh, Jimmy Savile. Quite possibly. Gary quite Glitter's possibly. been released. Uh, apparently, Sydney yeah. Cook was quite well quite well connected because uh, you know he, he was just one of those really lucky men that never actually really got to um, do any real time Gary Glitter has been released apparently this past week yeah. isn't it Did you see is, it, is he going to go back to PC World to pick up his laptop <laughs> I'm not sure maybe he'll maybe he'll start maybe we'll forgive him and he can no, start please give him his laptop um, back yet I would like to know that yes um but yeah so that's uh that happened this week. Also, coming up on Sky, there is a new uh, Fred West documentary as well, covering his time in Glasgow. So that should be good because that's because he that's not. Uh, well, yeah, because I think he might be linked to that well. to a Scottish uh, serial mm. killer, don't they? Yeah, he, is it the man in black? He did. I can't remember his name. The man in black is that mm, the one sure, that probably, he was but, to? Yeah, it'd be good to get more Tobin. information on his time there. Tobin, that's it. Mm. I don't think he had links to Tobin, don't they? Yeah. We know that he killed a child by accident. Well, we killed a child by running the the, the kid over in his ice because he was an ice cream van and he did knock the uh, child over. Though it was ruled out as accidental, you know, it was a uh, maybe a forewarning of what was to come. Did he, did um, he have to do a run a quick shot from Scotland? That's why he left it, wasn't it? Yeah, but he was. So I think he was. He was uh, paedophiling in Scotland that as well. Not the, Fred. The no, surely not Fred. Yeah. Um. If we put the next picture up there, uh, Hemi, let's have a look at this. Is, uh, this is, is a bit Fred, of an amusing... Fred West Patio still on oh. Twitter? Seen him in a while. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, Did you used Hemi, to follow him in next... Fred West Patios? No, I didn't. What was on there? Just, uh, just uh, something just kind of like japery. Just japery based oh, yeah. on Fred Tom West. Oh, uh, yeah. Jolly Japes. Well, there we go. We can see you there. Let's move on to the um, next uh, section of this presentation. So we got that kind of chase. Is that a sign sexual innuendo? Mm. Not innuendo, but it's a, a just sort of a serious sign, isn't it? You'd see, but the actual picture itself yeah. is uh, humorous. Anyway, in September 2004, Canic Chase gained um, notoriety again when footballer. Stan Collymore revealed that on several occasions he had visited Cannock Chase's many dogging spots to take part in anonymous sex and to pleasure himself whilst watching other people fuck in their cars. In 1998, Collymore punched his then girlfriend, Ulrika Johnson, and his life spiralled out of control, culminating in mental health issues and lewd sexual behaviour. Um, ruining what would have otherwise been a glittering career as a professional footballer. We can have a look at uh, Collie Moore there. Let's have a go to the next picture. That was, uh, if we could do, that's him in his days uh, playing for Liverpool. And he could have... Uh, well, he did fuck all. Anyway. When he injured for most of his time? When he shit? Well, I don't know. He, was, he broke the transfer record. Mm. Um, he was good, but then... At least he didn't turn into David Icke. <laughs> exactly. His head went. That was it, weren't it? His head went, and he was like, mm. "Oh, I'm feeling exactly. a bit rough." Can't play. He lost the plot. It. He was like, oh, um, oh, "Look at those huge, today. massive lips." It's amazing. He wasn't able to just, you know, tackle people with how thick they are. I'm anyway, saying he's got Collymore... really big lips. 
He's got hurts. cauliflower ears. That's what happens when you go dogging, isn't it? You've got to you've got to listen out and I don't know, suck. Yeah. The anyway, bits of Polymor... giving blowjobs with. Exactly. Polymore said of his behaviour, <clears throat> the following. What I have done is disgusting and I'm so ashamed. But I am only human. I can only beg for forgiveness. <laughs> I'm only human. I'm only human as well, but I don't go and do that. Um, over the last couple of years, I have been to dogging sites maybe a dozen to 15 times. And yes, I've I'm taken part time. and had sex during them. My only hope is that the people I know and love find it in their hearts to forgive me. So and there. Their bums. Yeah, exactly. I'm saying he's gay. And the chat are saying, um, well, they're giving him a name. I'm not exactly. allowed to read that out loud. No. No, we'll get we'll get uh, taken down again. Is that the, sort, is that the sort of me. thing? Is that the sort of thing that Ron would uh, how Ron would describe a lazy footballer? <laughs> Big Rod. Yeah. Anyway, Canuck Chase has been a popular dogging spot for years and still attracts sexual perverts to this day. In 2013, the Birmingham Express and Star reported the following. 100 sex pests on Canuck Chase each week. Dogging on Canuck Chase is on the increase, with more than 100 people a week involved in lewd activities at the beauty spot from as early as 9am. So some of them start early. Police today said the problem, which has long blighted the chase, is getting worse, and with people flocking to the site day and night. Officers well, it believe makes more doggers sense to start early in the morning because that's when you wake up with a morning wood, isn't it? Do, well, do prostitutes yeah. work on a nine to five schedule? Is that why they start at nine a.m.? <laughs> I think it's prostitutes. No, that's, isn't it? no, no that's, this is all free, yeah. Hobbit. If you want to go to your local dog yeah. spot, it's all free. They do it for free. They get yeah. off on it, don't they? Some people like being watched. Yeah. And Collymore goes along and watches. You know yeah. who you are. Yeah. Officers believe really doggers are travelling from as far as Leicestershire and Nottinghamshire. Mm. Wildlife and Rural Officer PC Pete Clark said the main concern for police was the litter which the doggers leave behind in queues in, oh. including oh. used contraceptives and dirty tissues which oh. could be a potential health risk yeah it can even be bothered to take them home dirty but there are also fears that young females visiting the chase to enjoy the area of outstanding natural beauty could see exhibitionists in the act um oh, young males enjoying the beauty in the area fucking well. misogynist bastards <laughs> i hate the police <laughs> There are three main car parks on the Chase Road. This is like an advert. This is just letting people know where to yeah. go, isn't it? This article. And it's off so of there... Junction 14 on the yeah. M6. So there are three main car parks. Don't go to the first one. It's the second one. That's where you want to. That's where you're likely to meet Collymore. Anyway, three main car parks on the Chase Road on the Chase where it takes place. Said PC Clark. Uh, they're there all day long. Sometimes they're down as early as 9 a.m. in the morning, and there'll be a steady stream of people throughout the day until the early hours, around 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. in the morning. Uh, this can clearly cause problems when so many families and children and dog walkers visit the chase every day. We've stopped a good few people over the years, but they just keep coming back. And coming, so there. Eh? Am I right? Yeah, and, they're coming. And now, reports of sightings are higher than ever. So many different types of people get involved. The main problem with dogging is the litter, he added. Well... I probably don't think that is the main problem. Um, Operation Mutley <laughs> was launched by police in April and uh, an increased number of high visibility patrols will be carried out. Staffordshire Police is determined to stamp out what this problem PC Clark added. The problem okay, gained notoriety... You could have at least added in like a, we're not having them shoving it down our throat any longer or something. Yeah. Like. Cause or, have you noticed whenever or, people talk about gays or trannies, they talk about it being shoved down their throat? <laughs> or um i'm selling a pair of gloves uh i am um you know you can buy them off me they're not very expensive i just want someone to take them off my hands yes yes right anyway back to the article alaska the problem gained notoriety uh, the problem gained notoriety in 2004 when stan collymore admitted dogging at the spot so there yeah, that was that article there 
So poor old Stan. All right, it, was, it wasn't his fault, you know. It was everybody else's. Yeah, he should, should control himself, and also, if you're as famous as he was in the, in those days, you don't go and do Moppy stuff D like says that. Moppy says endorse it. No, this is in Staffordshire. Anyway, Talking all right. So that's just a bit of a background there to Calic Chase. Child murder and dogging aside. Canuck Chase has also gained a reputation as a hot hotbed of unexplained phenomena. And this is what we're going to focus on tonight. <laughs> Since the 1970s, reports of black dogs, werewolves, British big cats, UFOs, black-eyed children, and even Bigfoot have appeared in the local press. However, no conclusive evidence has ever been produced verifying these claims, and they may best be thought of as forming part of local folklore. For generations, this forest in Staffordshire has been home to the highest concentration of odd reports in oh, the actually, entire country. Can we just go back a bit? Yeah? Do you know why it's called dogging? Uh, no, let us know. Uh, because in the early days of dogging, what would happen is uh, is because this, this stuff kind of generally used to happen at beauty spots, what would happen is the, the doggers would take a dog lead off with them, uh, 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 take a dog lead with them, and then if the police turned up, they'd pretend they were looking for a lost dog. Oh, uh, right. Okay. And also you maybe they tend bitch. to... <laughs> and people who take part in it like to like to... They prefer the doggy style position. <laughs> yeah, maybe that or too. I'm looking anyway, for my dog. bitch. Or she responds old dog to dog her, dog her name Sharon. Exactly. I'll ask her. Anyway. Okay, right. Okay. So, um, where are we? Ah, well, anyway, the most diabolical and peculiar creature to inhabit this mysterious woodland has to be the half-human, half-pig beast, locally known as the fucking pig man. Man, bear, pig man. Pig. Pig man. man bear. Anyway, all right then. So what we'll do, pig man. What we'll do is have a look. Image four. At the, at the fucking, at the infamous, um, fucking pig man of Canuck Chase. Let's look at this next picture there, uh, Hemi. We'll Leon have a look Britain. at this beast. It might be Leon Britton. Uh, well, it's. A, a, we'll have a look and see. We can. We can make up. Make up our own mind when we look at the the entity. There we go. So that's what we got there. That's. Uh, that's the fucker. Let's see. Anyway, let's have a look. A bit of background into this. The story of the Canuck Chase pig man has, has deep origins dated back around 70 years to wartime England when the region was occupied by the British Army who constructed two huge training camps in the forest. These camps, located at Rugley and Brockton, were some of the largest around. Interestingly, it was estimated that well over half a million troops passed through on their way to fight. And they're on all the front shaggy line. one pig, and that's what happened. Mm. Yeah, it could have been a staggering figure um, for a 26-mile area. I'm sure you will agree. Excuse me. Wow, also, you, man. That a bit within the borders of this tree. What? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't Dwight York playing play. for Aston Villa when he shagged the pig? Well, I think she wasn't bad in those days. She was quite nice before. Though before the plastic, she wasn't yeah. bad, was she? Uh, but yes, she, I don't know. When, but when anyway, she went she's... plastic, she was drastic. Yeah, exactly. There was no need it was for that. Not I don't fantastic. know why. Yeah. It upsets you, really, doesn't it? They And that produced Harvey, didn't it? Ooh, Harvey boy. came out of that encounter. Oh, boy. Ooh. boy, Harvey. I, anyway. feel, I feel sorry for him because he had, you know, like all that plastic, I mean... A fleshlight's more real than that. <laughs> yeah, it's not very nice to be honest. Anyway, um, also within the within the borders of these training camps was a prisoner of war hospital used to detain hundreds of German uh, and Austrian troops who were either captured or shot down over England. With enemy soldiers residing on Canuck Chase, the military obviously wanted local civilians to stay well clear. But how far would they go to achieve this? Would they create a myth about the scariest monster or did they ever create, to exist? Or did they create it and then create hmm. a myth about creating it? Yeah, we can come on to that perhaps. But it's a bit like in Scooby-Doo when they and the fear, the, the abandoned oh, fearground, the caretaker. Yeah. 
But not in the new one, is it? It's all diverse and that. I don't think yeah. Scooby's in the new one even. So no, Scooby's not in it. No, no, that's Shaggy. fucked that up. To yeah. be honest, no, it's Velma. Really, I like it when. Yeah, but Fred, I is, like it when Fred. Dick. But Fred and Fred and um, Fred and Daphne always nip off, don't they, together? Yeah. Anyway. So. But that's um, not possible because whilst uh, they go Daphne, off together. Daphne's well, a lesbian and and uh, Fred has a little dick. Yeah, Daphne and Fred go off together while Scooby and uh, Shaggy serve the monster lunch or yeah. cut cut its hair or something, don't they? Yeah. Anyway, back to this. Well, around this time, at the same the around the time the same time, German prisoners arrived. A rumor began to spread throughout the area of a human swine hybrid. What uh, reports swine? suggest? Yeah, oh, you swine. Yeah, you swine. Um, his report suggested roamed the woodlands after dark in search of anyone who had mistakenly strayed from the trodden path. A savage beast, this devilish monster was allegedly created by top military scientists before top escaping man. to top. solitary existence deep in the woods. Apparently, the scientists abducted a woman, hypnotized her, and impregnated her with artificial um, human stroke pig DNA seed in an attempt to create a creature to perform their tests upon. Um, the Gore, scientists Gore was involved in that, weren't he? Well, we'll come on to that in a moment. Yeah. The scientists closely monitored the woman for 10 months and they finally determined that the horrible test did not work. A year later, they were stunned to discover that her pregnancy was severely delayed. Uh, she bore a, a baby human who had the snout and the face of a pig. Much later, this creature retreated into the woods of Canuck Chase to avoid the prejudicial glances of human eyes. For decades, people have since then reported seeing a tall man with the head of a fucking pig roaming about the mysterious landscape. The almost fantastical rumours spread mainly through the medium of a terrifying rhyme that is still recited locally to this very day and reads as follows. When night falls, enter the woods at your peril, for inside lurks something worse than the devil. Avoid at all costs the gathering place, for at midnight the pigman roams on Canuck Chase. So yeah, pretty good, eh? So whoever wrote Shit that... fucking pants. Yeah. I've heard it's... this one before. The, the, the yeah. modern one is... Watch out for that trap door. You're a fool if you dare. No, hang on, um, I'll get mixed up. Don't open that fuck trap door. Fucking... You're a fool if you dare. She Look lay out on for her that back. trap door. There's something down there. No. What was it? She lay <laughs> on her like, back. Sounds you... like something Dave, oh. David Cameron would have liked. Remember back to his Oxford days and pig and, and the pig said. Hey, she do you opened... remember when Black Mirror did the thing about the Prime yeah. Minister had to shag a pig or they killed yeah. the princess? So he put his and then the it happened head. in real life. <laughs> yeah. David Cameron has put his dick in the pig's head. Yeah. Um, she and lay on her back. She opened like a crack. David Cameron, didn't um, a pistol over the ceiling. Um. Anyway, what happened? Where was I? Uh, blah blah blah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, although the right, like, although the rhyme accompanied the story, it seemed at first sight to be a fabrication dreamed up by the army to keep people away. There have actually been some credible sightings over the years. So, is this life imitating art, imitating life, imitating art, imitating life, imitating art? This is the pig man. So, don't fuck about. Is what the is what the moral of the story is. Here is just one of the stories sent from a local couple, John and Anne. <clears throat> In October 1993, whilst walking around. Castle Ring, an ancient Iron I'll Mo bet Age monument. He was monument. walking around Castle Ring, weren't yeah. he? He was walking around her ring, more <laughs> like her, her hairy ring, <laughs> um, a brown ring. The an Iron Age, yeah. Anyway, the Castle Ring, an Iron Age um, monument on Canuck Chase. Myself and the wife heard some strange noises coming from the surrounding trees. 
Thinking it was likely to be a couple enjoying an illicit liaison, we quickly moved away from the sound and headed back to, in the direction of the oh, car. I did, dirty Upon, fuckers. Didn't yeah, really dirty well, fuckers. Well. Upon reaching the steps down to the car park, I happened to turn around and lay my eyes on the strangest creature I've ever seen. This thing was seven feet tall. Was it from the neck down, numbers? it looked like... Uh, no, she's a, well, she's about seven feet wide, isn't, isn't yeah. she? <laughs> so... In the top half, fucking huge. So, um, this thing was about seven feet tall. From the neck down, it looked like a man, even wearing clothes. But its head was far too big for a human, and it had an elongated face with a snout-like nose. Mm. When I pointed it out to my wife, she became terrified, so we started walking more uh, more quickly towards our car and got inside. When we were in, we started to hear a, heli- a really high-pitched squealing noise that sounded like a pig being killed so yeah. what was it? the Quite question now becomes office. yeah squeal like a pig eh yeah. um squeal little piggy squeal yeah the question now becomes were the army really telling bullshit to keep people away or were they trying their damnedest to contain and cover or up had, or, a or had an army bloke fucked a pig and created a baby yeah it's like, it's a bit like rendlesham forest we were like hey i don't want to fuck with those americans yeah um anyway um were they trying to cover up a generic genetic experiment that went wrong the jury is most certainly out on this one, but the alarming tale of the fucking pig man is nothing more than a wartime fabrication. How can there be modern day sightings uh, explained? So, yeah. Oh, it was man. made up apparently by the squaddies in the war. Yeah, There's exactly. a pig lady so, out there, too. Yeah, I know. Quite We've all had a pig lady after, two, after, uh, after, uh, <laughs> after a few jars, eh? <laughs> Watch out oh, for the shit, pig lady. What did I do? Yeah, looks like a lady, but in fact, it's a pig. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, look at another report of the year. Donkeys. Yeah. Or Or hunters. Exactly. Beer goggles. So, so the following report of the uh, fucking um, pig man came from 2006. Uh, This is how it goes. We camped there one Friday night, roughly around. Uh, 2006, just a sheet in the trees, probably about five or six of us, and I left there by my mate. A sheet, so they didn't have a tent, they just had a sheet. Some people like to camp like that, I think it's quite (laughs) They would have shat in the trees as well. Yeah. So, but when they saw the pig man, they would have shat in their pants. They would have on people's cars. Yeah. (laughs) Just throwing it at each other like monkeys do in the zoo. (laughs) Having a dirty protest. So, They all had work on Saturday and planned to go back early. Friday night, we were close to the road. We had a fire burning for for warmth and light. Uh, The police pulled up and told us to put it out. Me being me, I told them no. Uh, They got there in their cars and drove off, which I thought was strange. (coughs) That never happened to me before. The next day, the lads went to work and they were planning to come back and camp. Uh, again that night after work I decided to stay on my own uh, move all my stuff deeper into the forest as to attract no police attention well, that'll, again that'll work out well. I was, yeah well I was there five hours on my own I set up three tents put sheets in the trees built a surround to stop the wind and um, got all the firework wood ready it was a masterpiece You'll make some nice two of my friends though. came for me Two of my friends came for me and um, said no one was up for stopping the night. I was pissed off. All the stuff was mine, around 600 quid's worth. And um, I was just to leave it in the forest unattended. Wasn't happy. I was not easily frightened, so I spent five hours alone in that forest that day with no fear. I had an 18-inch razor-sharp machete. Well, that's illegal. Um... It now sounds a bit sinister, More like but you had we an are 18, responsible. Eighteen-inch black rib nobbler. Yeah, exactly. An eighteen-inch, eighteen-inch, uh, Gildando dildo. So, <laughs> um, adults that were the from Gildildo. the yeah, a dildo from the from the Gildando range. The Gildando. The, the, the Summers. Yeah. Anyway, okay. The, you never know when, why, when you might need a machete. So that night, I rang everyone. I knew to get come back up and uh, 
help me with my stuff that I left there. No one wanted to, so I decided what I'm doing, I'm going to camp there on my own. I got a book and I was reading and and off I went. I pulled up my car and uh, we we had originally seen a UFO. I'm sure this guy's talking a lot of... Uh, I walked casually across the road and there was a tall bush uh, you had to walk through to get to the path. I suddenly clicked and said to myself, you're on your own now. But I uh, was wise and cautious, so I stopped in the centre of this large bush and lit a fag. I listened and heard a movement. I slowly and quietly moved out of the bush, expecting it's to see a big deer. For an um, American Instead... audience, what, what Ian said there is not a hate crime in this country. Oh, sorry, yeah. Lighting fags on fire in this country is, well, yeah. it's becoming socially unacceptable, but there wasn't a time and a place you could mm. do it, and usually it was after sex. Is it old um, man, Je- is it old man Jenkins don't... with his hard on in his hand that's going to jump out on him? Well, we'll find out. It could be Forrest Crabtree, couldn't it? Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's not my words anyway, so if there is a- anything offensive in this, in what I'm in what I'm saying, then it's actually not me saying it. So, For satirical so, yeah, purposes. That's my... Exactly. Okay. For educational purposes. Well, anyway, we're coming to the good bit now. So, instead, about 200 yards away from me, I was looking down a hill, and I saw a white figure on all fours. Uh, it looked like it was sniffing around, as a dog would, uh, as if you were walking down the street, covered in lampposts, sniffing other dogs' piss. First I thought it was the warden. He's found the stuff and is looking for his dog, but the sound it was making sounded more like a pig sniffing. So I thought it was a large boar. Uh, Was the right colour to be a pig? I watched it for about 30 seconds trying to determine it. Then it stopped dead and didn't move. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it knew that I was there. I froze, took hold of my machete and waited. Then this thing stood up on his back legs. It was fucking massive. I'm six foot three and this thing was at least seven foot tall. And it ran at me at at speed up the hill like a person would run. Squalling like a banshee. And you would hear on a horror film, crossed with a pig. I ran like fuck to my car and drove off without looking back. I ran, I ran, I ran away. away. I've never been so scared in my life, and I've never been back since, not even on, with 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 friends. The funny thing is, though, I've never heard of anyone know, uh, knowing or any other proof of this until last year. Can't believe I'm not the only one to see this. Typically something after two years of trying when I was on my own. I have proof of the lights like in the trees. Back, he was like moaning about all his stuff. He was like, oh, I yeah, I don't know. The guy's this. confused. In fact, you know, this is probably bollocks anyway. He's just made up. Pig man, my ass. So, yeah. anyway, magic dildo, my ass. The yeah. I have two other eyewitnesses uh, that I have come across that have seen the pig man. One pig other man. thing. I am the wolf. Pig man, pig man. Fucking pig man. I am the pig man. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah. One other thing I missed about this the first time was we were riding our bikes towards the lights and each of us felt a massive temperature drop. The only way to describe it would be to walk into a big meat freezer uh, and uh, that would hit you. The only way to so, describe yeah. it would be the temperature dropped. So if it's true, that's that's a bit messed up. But I'm, you know, the witness is anonymous. I tried to find the name of who that person was. Um, I think he's maybe heard the other rumours of the pig man. It's thought probably think, not had many Garot, friends. I think Garot wants to talk about his experiences on Canic Chase. Yeah. Well, we're going to um, we're round off the pig man though. Um, Hemi, if you. If you just put up the uh, next picture there, we can have, actually have a look. Um, oh, one of the lesser-known cryptics, the fucking pig man, has made its way into popular culture, of course, in the form of Man Bear Pig of South Park. And uh, we can yeah. have a look at that, Kemi, if you want to just put up it's Man a, Bear Pig. A, I'm sure... A, a um, yeah, it's a good episode of South Park, if you're into South Park. and uh, Yeah, created, by, sure, uh, yeah, created by Al Gore. I can't remember why. Why yep. did he create it? <laughs> oh, sure because he was trying to warn people the dangers of man bear pig, but no one would take him seriously. 
Mamber Pig is the hardest boss in the game. Excelsior! <laughs> nice. But yeah, so where is Man Bear Pig? I can't see. What's up on the street? Probably for the best. Is it? Oh, right, never mind. Well, you get the idea anyway. So that's uh, Pig Man, you know. So what do we think of Pig Man? Real or not real? He's real? totally do. He's totally real. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Real. Is yeah. it a load of pork? Al Gore. Al Gore wouldn't of... lie to us, would he? No. no. I mean, that's why uh, he bought all those beachfront properties, because he knew they were going to get flooded. Yeah. That, that's is it a load of porkies, maybe? Is. I think that um, the uh, pig man is an inconvenient truth. Mm. Did you see what I did there? Yeah. Yes. That was very, very clever of me. You did the bit. You did the bit. Yeah, the thing. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Anyway, okay then. So we covered uh, one of the mystery creatures of the chase there. What we'll do is we'll move on um, to the next because it's like Canuck Chase is probably like it's like a greatest hits album, isn't it? Of the uh, of the paranormal. <laughs> it's, the, it? it's the it's the so, uh, it's, it's Birmingham Skimwalker the, Ranch. Yeah, the best, the very best of the uh, of the best of the Beatles. So anyway, not only is there Pig Man as we've covered there, but there's also in Canic Chasers, I've been reports that the infamous, well-known Bigfoot, we, we all know of Bigfoot, I'm sure. So what we'll do, we'll kick off What's the a plural bit of, of background Bigfoot? information. Um, Bigfoots, big fights. Big feet? Yeah, what is what is Bigfoot in French, um, Hobbit? Yeah. You must know. Uh, uh, do you know what? Uh, <laughs> the only one I can think of, they, they, they call it the Yeti, or the... the uh... But so surely, yes, well, it's it's a word, word, be, be, because so, there's like the French uh, in Tintin. Uh, hmm. Here's the oh. lore on Bigfoot, right? Hobbit was on a fucking bender in Belgium in hmm. his, you know, a few years back, right? And then he got on a boat and he wound up in the woods in the middle of uh, fucking, uh, you know, the Appalachian Mountains, wherever, right? And he was still on a bender and he kept going. And then people are just photographing this man covered in mud on something. It looks like a fucking gigantic Yeti fucking thing. And it, they took it from there. Mm. There is um, Tintin in Tibet, which is Belgium, isn't it? That, um, That's right. The Yeti is the Yeti is actually in there. Oh, yeah. oh how about Tintin this one, is good, then? actually. There was... right, Laura, right, so we've got, we got some... I might have to do a poll about this. Right, so we've got a few things. So we've got Bigfoots. We've got Big Feet. We've also got, what if the plural is Bigfoot, like deer and sheep, which don't change in the plural? Mm. Or in Spanish, it would probably be El Patito Grande, which is Bigfoot. Yeah. Patito is foot. Grande is big. So... El Patito Grande would be the Spanish. Yeah, is this all the happenings um, that happened in? Uh, Canic Chase. I, in I, I've got you a, tra a translation. Canic Chase. Yeah. So well, in French, we will get back to Canic Chase shortly. We're just doing a bit of. Uh, we're just. We're just doing some languages. I, it, so, on. so in in French, right? You, you ready for this? Get get your notebooks uh, okay. out. Right. Uh, so, Le Bigfoot. Yeti et le bonhomme de neige abominable. How do you pronounce abominable? Abominable. Is neige. No, ne no uh, uh, black is noir, neige is snow. So, uh, uh, abominable on de neige. Uh, interdimensions already beat you to it a bit. Uh, abominable yeah, is uh, abominable in French. La Boniba is 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 Bigfoot male or female? <laughs> what sex is Bigfoot? We need to know. Well, th we there's, got, according there's, to we got, it's got to be Lady Bigfeet, right? We yeah. got the Grand Hoof, and then Alpha that cat said, "Was this Yeti talking about fires and Jaguar cars?" <laughs> uh, it was. It was. <laughs> I'm glad I'm someone appreciated that. Yeah. What can I say? The 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 uh, the Yetis appreciate space, pace, and grace. 
and they yeah. are appearing on the front cover of Piss. Yeah. Piss the reason there's no audio is monthly. When basically, like you've got uh, imagine like Cornholio from you know Beavis and Butthead, but like it's Hobbit. So the reason there's no audio of the Bigfoot is it's just running around screeching the N word, <laughs> mm. and the government doesn't want you to hear it. <laughs> Uh, well, yes, I think though what we'll do. Uh, let's go. Let's have a look at the uh, can of chase Bigfoot anyway before we uh, go on a bit that. Um, so, all right, we've looked at that. So, okay, in November 2021, paranormal investigator Lee Brickley claimed to have found evidence for the existence of Bigfoot in Canuck Chase in the form of footprints and claw marks. After a decade of searching for the beast, Brickley said the print was a terrifying 41 centimeter from toe to heel, nearly twice the size of a man size eight. So if we have a look at the footprint there, he took a photo. So put the next picture up, please, Hemi, and we'll look at the footprint, see what we think. So I've got to look at the um, print. Hold on, give me a sec. Give me a sec. Yeah, lob it up and I carry on. Ricky, well, it's up now, uh, Rick, no, which means it'll be good. Brickley said, I was astounded. I've never seen a footprint as large in my life. And That's it big. was clearly not. Yeah, it's a fucking whopper. That's and big it was without clearly... scale. Uh, I think the yeah. leaf might give it a bit of scale. And also, he probably he could have done that with the. Uh, he could have made that himself. Yeah. Um, I've never seen. No, such no a big, you're not suggesting he could have faked something. Yeah, it was clearly not made using a mold or cast. Hmm. This is probably the moment I realised the Canic Chase Bigfoot was more than just a myth. A month later, Lee found claw max on a tree can near I, a mutilated I, uh, deer. Can I uh, just piss on Lee's parade there? Um, that foot—it's just plonked straight down. <laughs> It's not. It's yeah. not a foot that's moving, is it? Look, there's no. There's no like. It's completely uniform, man. Right? <laughs> mm. Unless Bigfoot just like creature. puts its foot flat down and then moves and then puts its foot flat down. Well, maybe it does. Maybe it does. That's it. Maybe that's how it walks. We don't know. We've yeah. don't. We've never. We you know it's a mystery creature, so it may walk like that. Anyway, a month later, Lee found claw marks near a tree near uh, on a tree near a mutilated deer. He said it looked as though something had bitten. Uh, and then ripped its throat out before eating the torso. Um, you see a lot of dead deer on Canuck Chase. Often they've been hit by cars, but this was unu as unusual to see when in this condition. Lee claims that he caught a glimpse of Bigfoot once while researching his book. Well, obviously, yeah, he's written a book he wants to flog. He said, I can't say for sure what it was, as it was around 7pm and was getting dark, but the figure was covered in shadow whatever that means. It definitely moved more like an animal than a man and was easily... So even though it was in shadow, people. completely black, and he couldn't see it, it moved more yeah, like an animal well, than a man. he's got, got no friends, has he? So, you know. I tried to run after it, but it was too quick and disappeared into the dense section of the of the trees. Lee has been fascinated with Bigfoot since he was a child. What we'll do, put the next picture up, we'll see the, these claw marks... Which he oh, saw. Oh, the claw marks have been up for a little while. There should be a. Yeah, that could be anything, couldn't it? You know. So they're the claw marks that you that you thought Bigfoot did that. Anyway, he said, "I remember watching Bigfoot documentaries with my dad when I was young. All the famous sightings were in America. So when I was a bit older, I started researching the UK. Um, any UK sightings I could find, I just kept going from there, and here I am." Lee has published multiple books on supernatural occurrences in Canic Chase, including his most recent book on Bigfoot. Lee said there have actually been many sightings as far back as the 1800s of a man monkey uh, in Staffordshire. So, that's what Lee Brickley thinks. Um, let's have a look at him. Let's look at the picture of this, this guy. Probably he was bottom of his class. And, uh, let's have a look. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Have a look at this guy. He looks guy. like a bit of a sex case, doesn't he? Yeah, fucking slaphead. Um, I bet you want to insult, you want to insult him a bit. Yeah, do you want to have a go at this guy? <laughs> yeah, all right. He's oh, Hemi, you fucker! You never said that you did another episode of Dope Movies and Shows on the Cornetto trilogy. No, no, they're ages. That's ages old. Uh, Natsocks just putting the rest of it out. Oh, okay. Uh, what, what do you think to this geezer that, that wrote the book about 
Yeah. Cool. Look on the stream, I'm grow up. Full of shit. Um, on the stream? Yeah, beard. Slaphead beard. Yeah. So who uh, who's the slaphead? <laughs> that's uh, that's the guy who's writing the book about Bigfoot. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, the secret to Bigfoot. Yeah. Uh, well, he re- he wrote about it anyway. So anyway, in in February two thousand six, reports co- were circulating that strange beasts have been roaming Canic Chase, and now paranormal investigators are investigating a Bigfoot type creature said to be roaming the woodland, and a number of eyewitness accounts are adding to allegations that Sasquatch, as Red Indians have dubbed the, dubbed the creature, is alive. Um, respected, hmm, respected X-Files reporter Nick Redfern, hmm, well, nutcase. Oh, I think, I think Zero Red... thinks Nick, Nick Fredford, it's Nick, it's Nick Pope, Zero doesn't like Nick Pope, the government dope. Nick Redfern is just as bad, though. Um, <laughs> anyone called Nick is a bit of a fruitcake. Yeah. Anyway. Nick Redfern has monitored sightings from Canic uh, Ring to sighting Sitting Hill, uh, and all of the locals spotted who have spotted the mystery beast give the same description: a giant, hairy creature with blazing red eyes. Jack Houghton sparked at the Bigfoot alert with a sighting in the early hours of February eighteenth, nineteen ninety-five, um, on the on the Canet Rugsley Road. Writing for Fate magazine, Mr. Redfern reports. I think it's she was. I think it's Rusley. Is it Rusley? Whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't live in that area. <laughs> that's down your way, isn't it? Uh, that's yum yum. <laughs> anyway, it's is the it? Brummies, isn't anyway, it? Anyway, yeah, oh, I've never been there. Um, anyway, she was suddenly forced to swerve a car, narrowly avoided a cru- collision with a large, shambling creature that stepped into the road at a distance of about twenty feet. Considering was that it, she was, was travelling... or drugs? It could have been, yeah. He had his wanger out anyway. So, <laughs> advertising himself, what he had. Considering that she was travelling at high speed, she, Jackie said that it was a miracle I didn't hit it. The encounter lasted barely a few seconds. She had caught sight of the animal and said it was man-like and very tall, very hairy, with two self-illuminating glowing red eyes. Which quickly oh, so tra- illuminated eyes? My God. Yeah, glowing red eyes which vanished. It's a common, it's a common it feature. In encrypteds yeah they, it's often reported glowing red eyes for some reason um but i suppose that would shit you up more wouldn't it yeah um well, you, like contact I think lenses just embellishing it i think yeah jackie's claims gains credence when a mot- motorist and his party recorded a sighting on the same night in september 1988 one of the party of four said it was a tall man like figure sort of crouching forward as we passed it turned and looked straight at us we would describe it as around six foot it's eight coming inches right tall, very us. strong looking yep with darkish brown um with darkish brown hair i still get goosebumps thinking about it so i bet alec williams yeah exactly alex williams had an eight second encounter with bigfoot at castle ring an ancient monument well we covered that earlier in april i mean uh, you, know, you know that like uh mm. you know in the 80s everything was drenched in neon you know if you shine mm. your tail lights that are red like you know near like quite a lot of animals do you think it would reflect back a bit red <laughs> My memories of the 80s was just how beige and brown everything was. I mean, well, it, it, it seemed Britain, never brown yeah. and beige. In, in well, Britain, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, you wouldn't have wanted to live in, in Britain in the 80s because it was grim. But, <laughs> like, you know, uh, like, the Yanks were having an all right time if movies. <laughs> people I suppose in. Florida was quite a nice place to be in during the 80s. Mm. But yeah. my recollection of the 80s was everything was brown and beige, and that was like Saintsbury's colours as well. So <laughs> come to our beige shop with brown highlights. Yeah. I remember I mean, Penny, the 80s. Penny, you're, you're, like, you're like 89 years old now, so like, yeah. tell us about yeah. the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, no, it was. Um, I don't know. It's quite blue. It's quite blue and red. I think yeah. the eighties was. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I actually like. I know that like people watch this as England. There's probably the wrong podcast for this shit. To be honest, like we we can talk about cryptids more. 
it's all right. Yeah. We'll pick this up well, another another time. It was. Um, I remember the um, a lot of people had mullets and um, what else? The XR three car was popular in the eighties. Oh, tra- tracks, tracks. Yeah, yeah, but like you, you still had like you still have rock and roll and all. Like, and the XR four by four. It was a lot of yeah, sort of like electric music. Movies. A lot of you cars with XR at the start. Yeah. Yeah. Turquoise tracksuit tops, they were popular. Big, big, perm, big perm I know the 90s, the 90s was really nice in Britain, to be fair. So, like, you well, can't say within a short few years that, like... I remember, I remember all those things from the 80s, the ZX Spectrum. Yeah. I can't remember the 90s, though. Anyway, <laughs> we'll move on. <laughs> the 90s were good, eh? But whenever they set anything bro. in Britain in the eighties, right? It's like it's really grim and miserable. It's like fucking hell. It wasn't like that for most people. Only if you're on a sink estate. Oh, the summers were good. Yeah. You, had, you had a good summer and you yeah. had a good winter as well. You'd get about three, really? two or three feet of snow. Yeah, the sun was actually like I you know. Remember, remember it being winters. yellow? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you heard the about AIDS, the sun theory? AIDS arrived in the eighties, didn't it? Yeah. Do you remember yeah. about the uh, the sun theory where like people like. I swear the sun used to be a really nice golden yellow, and now it's just this small white fucking horrible yeah. thing. Yeah. Somebody yeah. been reading David Icke because both of these things are mentioned in his recent book. Are they? But well, I, I, I think it. when we're done talking about cryptids, that can be for another forty an episode. Yeah. yeah, the sun is all fucked up now. Have we done? Have we done a David Icke at all? No. Well, I have talked about lizard people. No, but so David Icke. Like, talk about that, Oh, what an episode about David Icke. Yeah, that would be good. Talk, you you know, it's it's it. it. I mean, like the I, I'm sure the eighties actually, but I've never seen like a positive British movie that like aesthetically remembers the eighties. When the wind blows was a positive movie, weren't it, Sergeant Oi Quinson? You seen when yeah, the wind blows, thought, Hobbit? No, I just thought it was all. Oh, this is England. And like, oh, oh my god! Every like, single movie like, about England is yeah. grim and awful. Well, exactly. and the only the exception blows, I can it, think it's about is Austin. Movie. It's a cheery movie about an old couple that survive that 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 get involved. They're in the middle of a nuclear war. Oh, oh okay, yeah. Because Don't I was just cheery. thinking the only the only cheerful British movie I can think of is Austin Powers, and that's like Mike Myers, who's American. Well, that's set in the sixties, and that came yeah. out in the early aughts. Hellraiser, yeah. yeah. Isn't it? I thought uh, even though Hellraiser, for some re- weird reason, is set in England but has American coppers wearing American uniforms. Uh, it has, Amer- it has some British actresses. Yeah. I did like that Julia in it. She was nice. Anyway. Dirty cow. She was a nice, a nice dirty older bitch. woman, wasn't she? Yeah, I would. I would. Anyway, anyway, okay. Well, let's go quickly back to this then. Um, so he described the creature as being seven foot tall, with short, shiny, dark brown hair, a large head, and eyes that glowed red. Mister Williams claimed that he saw the creature. Um, he saw what looked like a camera flash nearby and heard an owl-like cry. Another article what the fuck dated May. What is he on about? Uh, I don't know. Some people say but he must have uh, just got confused. Couldn't find what he wanted that night in Canic Chase, so he made this up instead. Like Another article crazy. dated May 2016, uh, oh, sorry, 2006. It mentions Derek Crawley, chairman of Staffordshire Mammal Group, reported a Sasquatch-type creature seen on a Canic Chase that could only have be- that could have actually have been a black panther. Now, I don't know where you can get confused with those two things. It was suggested that well, you know, the witness... Big, ca- had... big cats, big cats, hominids, they're all the fucking same, mm, aren't they? Exactly. Big cats, uh, homosexuals, it's all the same thing. <laughs> On kind of chase, isn't it? It was suggested that the witness had seen a big cat in a tree and mistaken the branches for arms. So oh, I fucking uh... do that all the time. <laughs> don't, don't you just mistake things, uh, trees for arms? Exactly. On the 14th of November 2008, uh, the Canic Chase Post published um, its own Bigfoot theory by reporter Jonathan Tan. The Chase's own Bigfoot has been with us since 1879, documents have revealed, and sightings of the creature continue to flood in. Prominent cryptozoologist Nick Redfern, yeah, nutter, declares its paranormal origins. 
Dozens of eyewitness accounts of Bigfoot have been recorded in the area in recent years. As recently as September, a sighting was reported by a local resident who described being chased by a terrifying beast whilst driving he got through Canada. Chased, Canic on chase. the chase, did he? Yeah, exactly. This thing was the shape of a human but stood seven foot to eight foot tall. As soon as it realized we had seen it, it stood straight up and ran towards us. The thing was definitely not human. It was huge. It was just tall, but broad and stocky too. Uh, I don't know whether it was flying or jumping or what. However, far from being a modern phenomenon, local documents telling of the ghostly ape man have been uncovered dating back as far back as 1883. Uh, in Shropshire's Shropshire folklore, Charlotte Sophia Brune writes, A weird story of an encounter with an animal ghost arose in the late years of my own knowledge. On the 21st of January, 1879, a labouring man was employed to take a cart of luggage to Ratton in Staffordshire to Woodcock beyond Newport in Shropshire. He was late coming back, his horse tired and could only crawl along at a foot's pace. So it was 10 o'clock at night when he arrived at the place where the uh, high road crosses Birmingham and Liverpool Canal. Just before he reached the canal bridge, a strange black creature with great white eyes sprang out of the plantation by the roadside and alighted on his horse's back, tried to push him off with his whip, and to his horror, the whip went through this thing and he dropped it uh, on the ground in fright. According to Mrs. Byrne, the man recovered from the fright. He returned home ex excitedly to spread the story. A few days later, a policeman appeared and told the man, that was the man monkey, sir. So, yeah. Nick Redfern, Ooh. nutter, a notable expert in the field who grew up in Staffordshire, insists that the Canic Chase Bigfoot is real, but not just a flesh and blood animal. Oh. Mr. Redfern head case, said that I think the Canet Chase Bigfoot is a, has paranormal origins and is linked with the la large amount of paranormal activity in the area. If this creature was flesh and blood, there would have been more uh, more than one to expose uh, to ensure reproduction. Yeah, I've heard, if there was a college... Uh, Nick, yeah. Nick Redfern goes on all the paranormal shows, doesn't he? I've heard yeah, it. guy with glass. Geeky guy with glasses, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. If there was I a colony still, of them... I still them want to arrange the fight between Zero and, uh, and Nick Pope. Yeah, well, we'll try and sort that out. Try and yeah, get Sky Sports to... Uh, yeah. Um, maybe we can do it in the car park that Noel Edmonds did bungee jumping. We would, <laughs> we would be seeing a massive evidence of them feeding on the local animal population. But the amount of deer kills that have taken place are nowhere near enough to feed a colony of these creatures. However, I am in no doubt that the reports people have made are genuine. I've spoken to a number of witnesses to, uh, about the creature myself, so and I am says, convinced talk, by their honesty. they're talking shit, but we believe that they believe that they Well, no. It. He's saying that, he's basically saying that the, the Bigfoot is a, is paranormal, so it's not flesh and blood, as we would think. And, and, and live in a tribe and reproduce that, and all that. Andy, it's it's it? a paranormal. Mm. It's quite Andy that. He went on. The Canic Chase Bigfoot has been a close, ghostly paranormal type thing and not a large physical ape. Writing online, Mr. Redfern, uh, nutter, say, says he agrees with the conclusion that the ancient man who certainly constructed the castle ring had mental abilities that extended far beyond his, our own and was able to essentially trap into other realms of existence mm -hmm. and construct from the mind images of bizarre and monstrous beasts that inhabit those same realms. The purpose of the beast is to act as guardians to prevent any harm being done to the areas that ancient man deemed of spiritual significance. So, yeah, I don't know about that, to be honest. Um... I think uh, Nick Ragfirm is clutching at scr straws with that theory. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and also uh, it doesn't help that he did have a mental breakdown as well. So, <laughs> so yeah, there's Canic Chase Bigfoot. A few reports covered. What do you reckon? Uh, possible, possible. <laughs> well, come on. It has to be a physical being, doesn't it? Yeah. Thing about them big... being supernatural beings, would that explain why it's so difficult to get on camera? Because mm. what you're know. seeing, well, what you're seeing with your eyes, it's not, it's not there, is it? Mm. It's, uh, 
you, you're seeing it with your mind, not your eyes. Exactly, and it, you also, if they were physical beings, you would find shit and piss, wouldn't you, as well, if you can do that. That well, is none of that. Just to circle back on David Icke a bit, there's a thing he done said where he's at this uh, hypnotist show, and it's uh, man and his daughter go up on stage, and uh, the the daughter's hypnotised to not see the man, and then the, the watch is held at the small of the man's back, and like, she's asked, tell me what you see. And she says, well, I see you holding up a watch. She's like, what's the time on it? It's it's such and such a time. And, and what does it say on the back? And so he presses the back of the watch to, like, the, the man's back. And she reads the inscription on the back. And it's like, well, how can you... See? So, basically, it's very funny, right? Because, like, she's leaning down, like, looking at the... His, dad's crotch except she can't see the dog she's been hypnotized and dad is like not in her field of perception so she's able to read this physical object which is the watch because the man is completely invisible to her and mm. uh, i think that's probably what's happening with these supernatural creatures like yeah. sometimes you can see them most of the time you can't and if you try and get it on camera or you get it as a blur if you're lucky. It's sort of like have, a wormhole. Have ghosts, have ghosts in shell suits mastered this then, Hobbit? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, so, but make of that what you will. But I think now we've got, uh, we've covered Bigfoot and Pigman. We, let's have a look at um, Alien Big Cats of Canic Chase. And I think, uh, who wants to cover that one? I've oh, sent Black that Dogs one. Oh, Big Cat Sightings. I, yeah, you go for that one if you got the uh, uh I'll do the big old cats uh, Go for big cats, let's do it. Uh I'll go open it up. Yeah, so Right, big big cat sightings. Bigfoot and the fucking pig man. Um are the yeah, more fucking, fantastic fucking, the fucking pig man. Is that his, is that his official fucking name? Fucking pig fucker are more fantastical creatures that have been reported in Canuck Chase. A more believable cryptid is the alien big cat, and Canuck Chase has had, had its fair share of reports of these creatures. Let's I, I, let's take a look at some of the big pack re, big cat fucking hell, put your teeth in. Uh, the big cat reports from the local press. Big cat report. Big cat reports. <laughs> uh, Panther alert on new sightings. First of September. That's what you wrote. Ian. I didn't. I copied and pasted that. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote September. It's well, you copy and pasted the first of September, two thousand and five. Yeah. Uh, Some so, other cunt did that. Yeah, <laughs> sightings of a snarling big, big black panther. Fucking hell! They're not even tongue twisters. Sparked a police search this week as terrified residents steered clear of Canic Chase. Tuesday saw the latest in a long history of black panther sight of panther sightings on the ancient woodland. Eyewitnesses have told us of large, muscular black cat. Roughly three... Shouldn't that be... Have told us of a, a large, muscular black cat. Roughly yeah, three feet long, know. prowling the woodlands near cat... Three feet long? Is that just the body? I suppose it would be. The tail would be... Because three feet the size, would be but... like a regular cat, wouldn't it? Top to tail. Uh, three feet is bigger than a... Three feet is probably... That's more of a lynx size, isn't it? A regular yeah. cat is that's not large cat, is it? That's like a small. Well, medium, it's bigger than your it? regular cat. So technically, it is a big cat prowling through the woodlands so, near Canuck Chase we'll Enterprise Centre. So, what do you think to the theory that the reason these are black is it's like adaptive camouflage? So they've gone from their regular to just like it, they've just gone black. Well, um, can is that possible? Can uh, they just go black? I don't know. Well, I suppose they. Or is it a generational thing? And why would they go black anyway? Diet. It would have diet? to be a reason, unless you're messing about genetically with cats, as humans did, yeah. which is why we've got all these, all these, humans. all these, uh, yeah, humans. You heard the, the thing about a cheetah might be a crypto, different sort, mind you, because well, it's got dog paws and it's not really mm. like other cats. Well. Alien big cats, in a way, are not unknown animals, are they? They're just out-of-place animals. Mm. So you've got the unknown animals like Bigfoot, which is an animal that we don't know of, not classified, 
Then you have the alien big cats, which we know pumas exist, but not in the UK. So that's what we're on here. I think it's the least exciting cryptic because of that factor. But anyway, Donald Rumsfeld is because it has a high chance of probability. Is that what you're saying? Ian? Or man, be a pig, and there have yeah. been escaped big cats in this country, so there's no mystery, is there? To that? Well, there's not uh, even a, but, not even yeah. escaped. They were turfed out in the like 1920s, weren't mm. they? Just like, oh no, I can't keep these animals anymore. Let's just fuck it off but, into the field. <laughs> yeah, even though ch- there's children around, and that can kill yeah. children. You know, rather than give it to a zoo or something, which I'm sure would happily accept it. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, uh, carry on. <laughs> terrified witnesses fled as the beast came within metres of them, seeming to appear from nowhere. Well, that's kind of like regular big cat activity, because they do, like, when you, like when, as soon as you know they're, near, know they're there, that's kind of like the last thing you're going to know, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Unless I should imagine hungry, you course. don't you don't know a tiger a tiger or a lion stalking you from miles away, do you? No, yeah, exactly. So. so I think that I think that's like quite possible. Warehouse worker Anthony Cooper, forty two, told us it was around lunchtime. A lot of people are saying they heard something like a growl, but I didn't. I heard a rustling in the bushes. As soon yeah. as I sounds like Collie Moore. Sounds Collymore's like Collie Moore's back. back. If there's a rustling, he, he thought in it was Collie Moore back. To be fair. <laughs> Uh, as soon as I turned my head, I could see something in the trees, a large black black shape moving slowly. Still could be Collymore. It, it was acting as if it couldn't see me. It just strolled past with its cock out uh, at a distance of about 10 feet. Went in some thicker bushes and was gone. I called some more people over, but as I did, they ran over telling me what they had just seen. It was an eerie feeling. Ooh. I witnessed Claire Clark, Claire Clark, receptionist, said it was about midday. I was walking through the woods with my boyfriend, Carl. Dirty bitch. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. Tucking him off. Yeah, we were talking, <laughs> giving him a hand job. No, we were <laughs> yeah. talking as we walked through the woods. We were talking. Just he was talking. fully erect. All yeah. of a sudden, I felt I felt him let go of my hand, and he shouted, "Look!" Just ten feet away from them, the black creature prowled past as if it hadn't seen the shocked pair. Shocked pair. We didn't know where to mm. run, climb a tree, or stand still. A shaking Claire said yesterday. It's it was growling to itself as it walked along. I'm shaking now to think of it. Uh, could this thing be some sort of ghost or apparition or something? If it uh, if it didn't notice well, that there. If we have ghosts in shell suits, then surely we have ghosts yeah. of animals as well. Yeah. You don't see ghosts in shell suits or ghosts of animals, so yeah. uh, I'm just thinking you only see ghosts of Victorian people, don't you? So but and Roman is, soldiers. In a couple of seconds, I'll tell you why she's bullshitting. Uh, it was it was ground. Yeah. yeah, it's typical. I decided to leave my mobile phone at my, my desk at work, else I'd have a picture of it. It definitely looks like a ah uh, uh, likely story. Yeah. I read people Plus saying she had his she had her mouth round his meat as well at the time, so yeah. she had I've to read, make something up. I've read people saying that it's perhaps a domestic cat. Well, to me, it looks like about seven or eight d- domestic cats rolled into one. <laughs> So is it like uh yeah. like what what were those transformers that stuck together? It's like uh, co- constructicons. Were transformers. They, they yeah, it's like transformers, robots in disguise. Is it is it seven or eight domestic cats in a trench coat? Is that what is that what she's saying? It is. Hmm, a bit like midgets trying to get into a nightclub. Yeah. A passing yeah. police patrol investigated the witness claim, but the animal had already fled into the undergrowth moments after appearing. Claire added, what if I'd been an 80-year-old, or if we'd had a child with us who was running around nearby trees? You can't help but think it would have been a bloodbath. Except yeah. there hasn't been one. Big cat expert Nigel Spencer said, most people say they've seen pumas or, or panthers. Cannock Chase is one of the hot spots for big cat sightings in the Midlands. Cannock Chase has always been a hotbed for unexplained sightings. More than 2,000 sightings of black cats have now been recorded on Cannock Chase. Hundreds of UFO sightings have also been recorded over Hedensford, Hedensford Hills, land which was once used by Druids for sacrifice and ceremony. Visitors mm. to Castle Ring over the years have also reported sightings of a Bigfoot-type creature roaming the land. Nice. Uh, is the beast on the prowl? Is is the beast on the prowl? Third of April two thousand eight by Mike Bradley. 
The disturbing discovery of the fleshless corpse of a mutilated deer on Cannock Chase is leading many to believe that the mythical beast of Cannock Chase is back on the prowl. Matthew Harrison of Cannock said that he was disturbed by the discovery. Every ounce of flesh seemed to have been stripped from the animal in a meticulous manner. Uh, would you yeah. describe cats as being meticulous? Well, that's a common trait with alien big cats. They do strip the carcass beer, don't they? Um, has been. It could reported. be two men in a suit, uh, like in Monty Python's Meaning of Life. It could be, uh, but uh, no, it's uh, Matthew told interesting. Us, Matthew told us, me and the family were out for a walk on Canic Chase Sunday, March 30th. As we were walking, I found a carcass of a deer. It was a very fresh kill, no smell and very few flies. What flesh was left was still red and fresh. <sighs> to me, if the animal had died naturally, sure it, surely it would take a while for small predators such as foxes to dispose of the carcass <sighs> or for it to decompose. But the most interesting thing, that when I found another carcass only 200 to 300 kilometres away, this would have been killed or died a few months ago. Maybe the story of wild cats on the t case are true, and and that this is one of its hunting places. Texas-based paranormal investigator and author Nick Redfern sees fucked off now. Yep. He won't live any won't live in England anymore, will he, wanker? Yeah. Um, That's a has spent many years investigating the mysterious ancient woodlands of Cannock Chase. He said, I've investigated quite a few big cat encounters on the chase. Is this German uh, Stan's, Stan's glory years? Is it? Yeah, playing with himself probably on the chase. There's, no, there's yeah. definitely, definitely something weird going on and the theory that some of them, Bigfoot sightings, could be big cats in trees is a genuinely interesting yeah. one. Uh, and I can't Martin... honestly see that. I can't see that myself. No, anyway, you, know, you know the difference yeah. between a cat and a fucking monkey, don't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're quite a bit different. Where's our bit? He's a bit quiet. And Martin Rayner, Canuck Chase coordinator of Big Cats in Britain, said, I strongly believe these big cats are out there. Maybe not in the heart of the chase, but possibly around the fringes, which do not receive as much human mm. traffic as the main chase. There are several theories mm. as to what these cats are, but we can only go on the facts. He's just the facts man, then, is he? 70% of all reported sightings are of a black animal. There can only be one of two, a black jaguar or a black leopard. Both are known as the black panther. Wakanda uh, forever. Wakanda Hobbit's forever. Got a black, Hobbit's got a black jaguar, hasn't he? What kind so of it's, is it's a green uh, jaguar. I knew that would bring you back uh, into the fray. Yeah. Um, Ooh, um, chase me. Mm. Row. Black dogs, black dogs is you, Hobbit. Black dogs matter. Oh, what? Yeah. what? Black dogs? Yeah, I resent this implication. In the back chat. In the back chat. I'm not. I'm not interested in dogs. Oh, oh, uh, right. Uh, black, black dogs. Right, black dogs. Um, between um, you, so between, they did go hunting, didn't the video I? Video did... and harmful terms. Yeah, on there somewhere. I did go hunting on that video in. Um, I went to the investigate the new forest, remember? And I didn't. I went to the area of the black dog, and I did find some black dog shit, which I almost trod in. Uh, but there's no other evidence there. Like, remember the video I put there? That yeah. one was taken down, wasn't it? Have you found it, Obit? Uh, is it ufocc.odt? No, no, it's not. It's These black go dogs. Up a bit, up black, a bit further, black dog <laughs> CC. Oh, you do it on purpose. Uh, that one yeah, is. yeah, that's... <laughs> you, you do all right yeah. then, fair enough. Uh, just wait for it yeah. to. Oh, open office is like, what do you mean you want to upload this uh, thing? Why is it doing got... this thing with black background, but all the stuff it's writing is like white, white on black? That's ridiculous, yeah. right? I need to change the formatting on this before I read any of it because this is just absolute dog shit. Uh, uh, black so dog, black dog shit. It was black, black dog, dog shit. shit, exactly. Now, how do I change the background? To, why is the background like? Well, I hate file. this. Go to file settings and so on. No, no, the, the, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you what I got. got... It's backer settings, Hobbit. <laughs> look, look, it's it's very simple. This, this is what I got on my. I, I set my my open office to be um, thingy. And I your just, your uh, your text document, it's white 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 background, black text, and it's ridiculous. I right, so well, I just Ian, make things. You've committed a hate crime. You've upset the artist. 
Yeah, you put it on black and white. Why, why do you I do did that? It, I did it. It's, it is on... Oh, right, you want it on white and black, do you? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, yeah. I don't know. All oh, oh, right, sorry. I didn't no, know so that. It's, it's just it's, everyone else, so everyone else on it. Earth... You, everyone else on Earth now. has it has it on black on white. So I, yeah, I, well, everyone else on Earth are dickheads and they're f- they're thick and they I hey, hate them. You know, hey. Yeah. So anyway. let's see, dogs. Right, if I do Control F, dogs. <laughs> uh, find uh, next. I, have a go with that. I'm on the Grant's whiskey tonight. The, the, I've I've, I've actually I've, I've searched in this. Uh, I'm going to go. Oh, because med- I'm in the, the wrong bloody minute. document. Oh. On. God, <laughs> for fuck's sake! Why is it? This is, I hate this. It's all part of the humour, though, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it, it, yes. Uh, uh, f- ah, yeah. ah. Here we go. Right. Forget, forget Bigfoot, Panthers, and UFOs. Okay. Also known as, um, remember when Waps. they tried to change? Oh, they the, the, yeah, that's. They had to be named to wet ass uh, aliens. Waps. They were waps. Yeah, that's it. Waps. Um, there's something even more chilly on Canuck Chase Springs. It's time for the Fabod Hellhound, a portent of doom. Reports have been received on paranormal websites of the demonic dog roaming our area. The hound, also known as the Ghost Dog of Brereton. Um, is there a space but actually called Brereton? That is an unusual place name. Let me yep. just have a look. It's in the Midlands somewhere, near Birmingham probably. Oh my I god, that say. is a real place. Yeah, it's it just is, like yeah. it's like it's Bri 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 Return. Bri Return. Okay. Bri, um I think of the cheese. Bri. You can re- Bri uh, That that's got the letter I in it. Anyway, it's been seen on numerous occasions stalking the roads leading into Bri Return. Yep. The apparition has been described as large, black, muscular, and sharp pointed ears and strangely glowing eyes. British folklore indicates that the black dog forewarns death. The most prominent sightings happened in the 1970s and early 80s. Whilst driving through the chase in 1972, Nigel Lear described seeing a ball of light crash into the ground. He slowed down to take a closer look and was confronted by what he described as the biggest fucking dog I've ever seen. Fucker. Within a month, if one of Mr. Lee's. If you, saw a, if you saw something, something bright crash into the fucking ground, would you go and have a? Oh, I'll just go and check out, and see what that is. And like, haven't I mean, haven't these people seen enough fucking movies to know what happens when you mm. do shit like that? Oh, they split up. I would go and have a look. Yeah. Anyway, the guy saw the fuck the biggest fucking dog he'd ever seen. Oh yeah, seen. So big, biggest fucking dog he'd ever seen. Fucking fuck. Within a month, one of Mr. Lee's close friends died in a terrible industrial accident, which Mr. Lee believed may be connected to the dog apparition. Pure coincidence. Oh. <laughs> it, it, in it, the sound of a dog going, it, it, the, well, the, you know, going. <laughs> I can't do what is uh, Matt Lee's uh, laugh, but you know the one. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> Yeah. Imagine Mutley's laugh. Um, in January 1985, there was another report of the Hellhound stalking Colpit Lane Brewery to return. Mrs. Sylvia Everett of Cannock Wood Road described a strange misty figure moving across the road as she and her husband drove on a warm and clear summer night. Can you hear that? No. It- Look, Discord does that Dan thing Colin where we, you try and play stuff and it just mutes it all. Yeah. So, that was a Dan yeah. Collymore had Canuck Wood, didn't he? When he was the uh, uh, telegrams better for trying to insert audio. In. Yeah. Um. So anyway, uh, strange misty figure. Uh, Bloody. doesn't haunt clear some of that. Although they could not explain the incident, Mrs. Everett believed that it may have been connected to the dog lore of Brewerton. and. Traditionally, demonic dogs are associated with graveyards, bridges, water, crossroads, and places connected with violence and death. Cool. Approaching Brewery Rita, I'm going to just call it Britain from now on, on Rugely Road? Rugely? Rugely. Rugely, the locals. Well, why is there a fucking G in it if it's pronounced Rouge? It's the Greek spelling. Bl- bloody Greeks. You come to an ideal crossroad where the Rugely Road, names. Colliery Road, Stalacop Road, Stand and Colliery Startly Road. Lay meet. 
Oh, so there's a full standing, road. Did you say standing cock road? That was with yeah. Stan Collymore. St- style cock road and startly met lane mate. Okay. Yeah. The area is also associated with the former Lee Hall in Breton Collieries. Lee. Hazardous yeah. places where workers at times met with terrible accidents. Could there be a connection between these sites and the spectral hounds? Why people go on about mines? You think there were like accidents like every fucking single fucking day with somebody dying? In those well, days, they were though. <laughs> yeah, and, the, and yeah. The, the, the pixies were like stealing people, so it wasn't just Tommy accidents. Knockers. The Tommy Knockers. Yeah. yeah. Before the they pi- became quite a good indie band of the sort of the late eighties. Yeah. What anyway, the pixies? Kind of, yeah. Where is uh, my that, mind? Where uh, is debaser. My mind? Debaser. Uh, the fabled to heaven. To heaven. Oh yeah, that yeah, was a good one, yeah. yeah. That that I I quite like the the pixies. The fabled Canuck Chase Hellhound has proved a hit across the world with websites as far afield as the United States, chronicling its history. Last week, the Post revealed the forest land had a rich history of spooky encounters with the demonic dog, which is believed to be a portent of doom. You've already said that. The hound, known as the Ghost Dog of Brereton, has been seen on numerous occasions stalking the roads leading into Cannock and Huntington. Is that where the um the incident happened? Uh, Huntington. Uh. It, yeah, is that like the man? And he's just like, I'm. I'm going to shoot a bunch of people today, and no, he that's did. Hungerford. Oh, Hungerford, oh, yeah. Huntington. And Why is also Huntington? That's fucking miles away, because Hungerford's down near Gloucester, mm. I think. That's, no, it's near me. No, Hungerford's near me. Oh, uh, Hungerford, Huntington, yeah. same Michael Ryan, different. wasn't it? Michael Ryan. Yeah. Um, yeah. That morning, and, though, the, that morning, Michael Ryan's mum said to him, um, uh, Michael, nip up, uh, just sh- shoot up the town and get me a loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, carry on. Oh, yes. Uh, so, Huntington. As such, uh, Huntington Life Science come to mind. I think that's like they do research into no, no, animal cloning. Hunt- hunting done. I think you're talking about hunting done, aren't you, Robert? Bloody how? How many like hunting names? Oh, you, you'll shit yourself if you see how many fucking. Such is the interest in the story websites such as Paranormal Nights, which run spooky adventure theme activities over the chase, and American-based Creatures of Time have all flagged our stories on the Hellhound. Paranormal website Level Beyond has even asked visitors to the chase to submit any spooky encounters to it them. <laughs> so I, I read it as it's written. They write, Over the years, Level Beyond has reported on various mysteries surrounding the English town known as Canuck Chase. Um... <laughs> Uh, can it chase? Besides the alien and Bigfoot references, another mysterious creature said to roam the air, a big black dog. The apparition has been described as a large dog with sharp pointed ears and strangely glowing eyes. The most prominent sightings happened in the 70s and early 80s. The Post reported whilst driving, oh, while driving through the chase in 1972, I resident Nigel... Well, I, I hope they weren't reporting and driving. Hmm... Uh, resident Nigel Lear described seeing a ball of light crash into the ground. He slowed down to take a close look and was confronted by the biggest bloody dog I've ever seen. Oh, it was the biggest fucking dog moment ago. Your story's fucking changing. Dog I've ever seen. I mean, what is it? Is it a bloody dog or is it a fucking dog? Come on, Mr. Lear. Whatever, keep, keep whatever you want. Straight. Thanks, yeah. Within a month, one of Mr. Lee's close friends died in industrial accident. Well, we said that a bit, which Mr. B- Lee <laughs> believed me connected dog journal- repression. I fucking love journalism. It, it, when it's the good, editor says... Good. Look, pad this story out. It's like, okay, I'm just going to repeat what I've already said then twice. <laughs> Fuck it then. I think that's... Yeah, we said this bit about Sylvia. Yeah, no. Oh, well, that's it. I'm, I've done my piece now. Yeah, I'm well done. Be, I'm no. going to shut up. Yeah. That's fine. All right then. So there you go. That's black. That's the black dog, eh? Um. Okay. What we'll do then? Um, we sure come to the whole street. So we'll... Well. What we'll do, let's move on from the black dog, because um, let's move on to the black-eyed children of the chase. So the black-eyed let's move bees. on to this one then. I'll, uh, no, that's the band with... Um, that bird that um, the Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Fergie. Yeah. And not Prince Andrew's Fergie. 
the Fergie other one. What, Fergie what pissed herself on stage. Pissed her pants into water sports. Yeah. So, black-eyed children then. Okay, then. so over the years, reports have come from China Chase of a ghost girl who has core black pits for eye sockets. The Huffington Post republished the following report. <clears throat> On Saturday, the 13th of September, my wife and I were walking through Cannock Chase near Stile Cop with our dog. Uh, once we entered the woodland, the road was no longer visible. We started to hear the giggling noise of a little girl. To our amazement, a child no taller than a meet one meter high uh, appeared as if out of nowhere further up the path in front of us. We stopped dead in our tracks after noticing her eyes had no color. Her head was tilted to the side in much the same way as if she had been hung. It's actually hanged. Um, you don't say hung, do you? Exactly. You say hanged. Well, you say well hung, don't you, when going on a bit of stud in a porno film. Um, <laughs> What's that you say? She you stared say at us for around five child. minutes. Yeah, it could be. Uh, she stared at us for around five minutes before running away into a densely grouped area of trees. My wife wanted to follow her, but I was having none of it. Um, so that's one report. <coughs> a report from the early 80s by a woman using the pseudonym Mrs. Kelly reads as follows. Around two months ago, my daughter and I were walking through Bridges Valley, an area known for its spectral sightings, when we heard the screams of a young child. I couldn't tell if it was a boy or a girl. Yeah, this is, that's, uh, that's quite common these days, isn't it? <laughs> um, but they definitely seemed in distress <coughs> and sounded very close to us. So we instantly started running oh, towards the noise. It was in distress. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we couldn't find the child anywhere, and so stopped to catch our breath. That's when I turned around and saw a girl stood behind me, no more than ten years old, with her hands over her eyes. She was waiting Ooh. for a birthday cake. Mm. I asked I if she that. was okay. I don't know. She must have said. She was asked if, it, and I, I, as if she she had been the one who was screaming. She then put her arms down to her side and opened her eyes. It was then I saw they were completely black. No iris, no white, nothing. I jumped back and grabbed my daughter. When I looked again, the child was gone. I, it was strange, really. I knew something was going to happen even before it did. It was a very weird feeling. So, yeah. The Black-Eyed Child. In 2021, Birmingham Live reported... Uh, that the black eyed girl had been sighted again by a pair of teenagers. The report reads as follows The young couple set up their tent by the Birches Valley area. When settling down for the night, they heard noises around their tent at midnight. After taking a little peek outside, they heard a child giggling before a shadowy figure was seen drifting between the trees. I was absolutely terrified. I'd read stories of, in the news shitted. about the black-eyed child. Yep. But it was, wasn't was until the thing stood right in front of me that I could quite believe them, one teenager said. I knew instantly that we were dealing with the real thing because it moved in ways humans simply cannot move. It was like it could teleport from one place to another when it was moving around and hiding behind the trees. But the girl disappeared, leaving the teenagers terrified without sleep and waiting for sunrise. They spotted the girl once again while walking back to their car. They noticed the black eyes peering from behind an oak tree. Oh. So, yeah. A few tire, stories there. Um, the now, tree. what we're going to do is shit the readers up. Because we've got a bit of a, some footage here. If you go to there's a clip in... Uh, if you can dig that one out oh, there, uh, Hemi... Clip number one. So, so in 2015, is drone it above footage. Where you put the text in or below? Ah, right. Let uh, black eyed the... girl, can it chase ghost? Yeah, yeah, that's the fucker. In 2015, drone footage of uh, can it chase appeared online, which claimed to show the black eyed girl, one of the black eyed girls, appearing. Let's have a look at the footage. And we'll see what we see. This, if you, if you're a bit of a wimp, don't look. If you it's shit playing. yourself, pants, pants will be shitted. Yeah, this will shit you up. Hopefully it's been played. Yeah, it's going, it's going. 
Good. Nice. Some footage. Mm -hmm. I'm there, isn't there? Zoom in. Yeah. Look at that. Ooh, dodgy, yeah? But it eh? could yeah, but it could just be someone fucking around, couldn't it? Well, yeah, but they said that about the Patterson footage. Definitely Bobby something D's, dodgy Bobby there. He's sat on the toilet already. He's prepared. Yeah. Okay. Professional ghost hunters have now said the footage There's can be There's a girl. Proved. There's a girl on Canic Chase. Yeah. How could this possibly happen? Anyway, professional ghost hunters said uh, they have, have ne they said the footage could be proof of supernatural activity in the area. Or it could One be of a these. Proof for a girl in, on Canic Chase. Yeah, but you know, one of these, Robert Palm, who describes the activity as terrifying, he said, Canic Chase is considered one of the most haunted places in Britain, so it's no surprise that the area draws lots of rumours about beasts and ghouls. We've had lots of reports of a black-eyed girl seen walking around. At first, she appears like a normal girl, and walkers are worried that they lift, that a little girl is lost in the woods. Um... They see her eyes, and then she just disappears. It's terrifying. Robert believes he may understand why this particular spirit is haunting the woods. A diphtheria outbreak in the 1800s claimed the lives of local children. Ooh. However, it has been suggested that the ghost could be a victim of lo the local murderer. Raymond Morris killed three children in the area between 1965 and 1967. So we covered that earlier. Yet other people who have seen the drone footage merely dismiss it as a fake and a person dressed up. Paranormal investigator and slaphead Lee Brickley said, in my opinion, the black-eyed child is some kind of demon. So, yeah. Oh, well, we so, need no. Yeah, we do need, we need answers. Yeah. <laughs> well... A related, just kind of related anyway, what we'll look at, this story now, we're going to the next story, it comes from the Birmingham Express and Star from the 16th of February 2021, which is interesting, isn't it? 16th of February 2021, exactly two years ago, to this Ooh. very night. Spooky. So, we're even being haunted by this. Um... If we go, so mystery surrounds, um, they, it said the following, uh, the report, mystery surrounds the placings of dolls in an area of woodland of Cannock Chase. Boy babies have been um, attached to trees in wooded area near Bin Brindley Village car park in Hendersford. A Ouija board was also located on the floor nearby. It is not known where the dolls have come from or why they have been left in the area. It looks like the set of a horror film. The dolls were located near the site of what was the Ministry of Pensions Hospital after the First World War until the mid 1920s. So, if we look at the foot, we can put the footage on there, uh, Hemi. Just put the next to get clip, it up. number two. Yeah, let's have a look at this. This is very eerie. Yeah, <coughs> to say that the weird least. Island. Is it in Italy or something? That weird island. Yeah, this is kind of Chase here, look, and there's one of them attached to the old uh, is that to the a, is tree. Is that a Ouija board on the floor? It is, there's a Ouija board on the floor. and uh, Creepy. Forewarning, I will be doing a Ouija board session myself and film it for an episode coming up when I get round to it. But uh, that's to come in, in uh, coming up, so we'll see if I have any luck. But yeah, let's look at this for the moment. Bit, sh bit freaky, eh? Creepy, eh? Bit of a Blair Witch... Blue Witch Project vibe going on. Yeah. Mm. Probably some fucking students art project, though, isn't it? Uh, yeah, probably an art project, but yeah, it's very much peculiar. They've been there a while. You can see they're all mouldy. Look, the dog don't give two shits, does it? Well, there's snow on them, isn't there? Oh, oh there's the dog there. <laughs> see, they're Maybe all like uh, uh, green and kind of limey, mossy, aren't they? Yeah. I actually yeah, found a doll like that. I found a doll like that, and uh, in my parents' attic, and I put it on eBay, and I got—I think I got about twenty quid for it. So it wasn't bad. Yeah, that's, that's the Ouija that. board there. Gonna haunt, at least they ain't going to haunt you now. Yeah, so stick it online. Look at that one. Look, uh, that's got that's got a right on it. Look, it's got, a raj, yeah. it's got a proper Raj on blackface. Yeah. Mood. Like oh. that. Yeah. How very peculiar. Weird. 
strange. Shit your pants stuff, that is. It is, I wouldn't want to walk into that. But yeah, <coughs> so... So yeah, that kind of ties into the Black Eyed Children type thing there. Um... Do you want to do the UFO bit, um, Hemi, or I can do? I can run through the UFO. No, you do the person. UFO bit. Yeah, UFOs. Okay, we'll run on and uh, come into the home straight of the uh, presentation now. So, of course, UFOs tie into uh, Canuck Chase with it, as they do everywhere. So we're just going to um, run through some reports of UFO activity in the area. Um, in March 2015, the Birmingham Mail reported the following. UFO sighting in Cannock Chase as hundreds report loud noises from the sky. A strange aircraft spotted moving slowly and loudly across the night sky in Cannock Chase has sparked a UFO frenzy. Hundreds of householders took uh, to social media after the first hearing after first hearing a loud drone. They spotted they then spotted a massive object moving slowly over their homes. Many believe it was a very earthly explanation for the chasing close encounter that has uh, had the community buzzing. Locals in Staffordshire town believe that they saw a secret military prototype, possibly from a US aircraft carrier uh, currently stationed off Portsmouth. And the British UFO Research Association has not discounted claims that a drone may be behind the rash of reports. The area has been a UFO hotbed since the early 1980s, but last week's incident is the biggest in terms of sheer volume of sightings. Uh, shortly after the X-Files incident at around 9pm Tuesday, Facebook sites were awash with re- details of the ufo alert one individual posted my house was rumbling and i'm still shaking it was slow and it was huge another wrote way too slow for fighter jets it flew directly over our house and made a sharp left turn and carried on craft sporting three red lights was so slow uh, it was so low that many feared it was a plane in trouble Paranormal investigator and slaphead Lee Brickley witnessed the same phenomena and began blogging his as the drama unfolded. He had described the th- a thunderous rumbling like a World War II bomber. Before anything could be seen with the naked eye, there was a deep and very low droning, he said. After around three minutes, the craft came into sight. There seemed to be an incredibly large and astonishingly low in the sky with three red lights that were easily noticeable. The UFO travelled very slowly and many people thought it was about to crash. Lee claims you could still hear the growl of the engines after the mystery machine disappeared. Canuck journalist Hannah Hills also has also worked for the Sunday Mercury, was also alerted to the thunderous noise. It was ever so loud as it went for on for quite a while, she said. It was much more prolonged than a military jet and was very curious. Another rare resident reside, described the sound of the jets that followed it by a loud whirr akin to propellers. The reports and Lee is still collating them, have spawned three theories. Members of the public did see something from another planet, or they witnessed a plane in distress, or they saw an experimental military craft, uh, a so-called black project, being tested over Staffordshire. Lee added, I've checked with online flight tracking services and have concluded it would be impossible for this to be a plane in trouble. There simply weren't in any flights in the area at that specific time. I also contacted Birmingham Airport to make sure, and they confirmed that none of the flights leaving or arriving the airport experienced issues that would have led them to, uh, to, to fly so low. A number of recent UFO alerts uh, have turned in, out to be drones, which takes a spectral view of alien claims and could well be the explanation for Tuesday's mass sighting. A spokeswoman said, I'm sure that something that, that can be explained, whether it, it will be explained is another matter. There are so many drones around. She stressed that tests of milit- secret military machines are in fact non-fiction. 
Developments of new black projects, military hardware and vehicles can take place between 20 and 30 years. We are not going to know about the development and tests that go on. There are so many reasons why people see things in the sky. So, yeah. Um, so, you can see that uh, that's probably uh, many witnesses. Obviously, there was something above Canic Chase. Was it a UFO? Probably not. Um, but did a UFO actually land in Canuck Chase in a Roswell-style incident? Um, the following report comes from the 1960s. It is being dubbed as the Midlands' own Roswell. The, the well, controversial flying like, saucer... Oh, it's, this, this is the Midlands' Roswell. This is well, Ros East Anglia's Ro Roswell. <laughs> well, why do they keep saying it? Well, Roswell was a the first uh, UFO crash, wasn't it? So, yeah. so uh, yeah. So, anyway, controversial American flying saucer reports brought to the public attention thanks to whistleblower in the intelligence of the uh, intelligence arm of the U.S. Air Force, and it was U.S. Navy First Class Petty Officer S.R. Bannington who raised alarm bells about a mysterious crash in Penkbridge small town on the edge of the ridge of Penk near Catton Chase, Staffordshire, between February and March 1964. Three bodies were recovered uh, from the operation to deal with the incident at Coxbarrow Lane, which involved an Air Force Intelligence and NATO. Barrington was stationed in the Caribbean at the time and told of his discovery after he intercepted a Soviet transmission. He said, the Russian message referred to a UFO malfunctioning and falling to Earth in two parts, the larger section near Penkbridge, the other splintering over West Germany. History further surrounded the incident when eyewitnesses came forward uh, to say that he took photos of a delta-shaped object spotted in a field near Penkbridge at the time. Harold South of Blockswitch claims the curious item was partially covered by a tarpaulin and placed in an air aircraft transporter. He came across it when he was stopped from driving in his van at a roadblock manned by the Army, RAF and police personnel. South said the officers confiscated his camera and took the pictures of the scene. Uh, when he was returned to him, the film had been taken out. Paranormal websites report the wrecked craft was taken to Porton Down Scientific Research Centre. Now, Peter McCrea, a former clinical psychologist turned author, has turned the spotlight to the, on the explained crash in his new book, Zones of Strangeness, an examination of the paranormal and UFO hotspots. To help him report on the unusual format, Phenomena. He has worked with paranormal investigator and head case Nick Redfern, who was bo born in Pencil, Walsall, and currently works in the U.S. I don't think he does. It was lies. He, he doesn't work in the U.S. It's all he made that all up. There was no mention of the pen. Yeah, he did. He research people research. He was on about you know he was he was, he reckoned he said he was working for the government and they they gave him a uh, flying saucer to work out the mechanics of it. Obviously, someone who's given that job, they, they're like, going like to be, a, a, you know, I, yeah. But there's nothing. There's and there's no there's no record of him going to university or anything. So, yeah, he's full of shit. Well, there wouldn't be. Wouldn't there's no mention of the pen CIA. Yeah, bullshitter. There's no mention of he's not even on. Yeah, LinkedIn. but they wouldn't work, wouldn't there, if he worked for the CIA in the super secret space program? Yeah, but you would be on the records of universities and stuff, wouldn't you, when no, you got your education? Lot. They'd walk the lot, yeah. Fair enough. You're being ignorant. Stop being ignorant. <laughs> There's no mention of the Penguin Big Ridge Cask in classified MOD files, and the incident went unreported in no local newspapers at the time, but McCure was drawn or, to it by Redford. Or, or was it covered up and all deleted? Mm, could have been. Rubbed out. He included the case in his own 1999 book, Cosmic Crashes, after being tipped off by Leonard Stringfield, a former uh, USF, a USAF intelligent officer with an interest in UFOs. It was Stringfield who had 
stalled Brangham's account of the crash. Peter, Mm. who adopts an open-minded approach to the case study in his book, admits being puzzled by the Penkbridge incident. If there were hold-ups on the road, you would have thought there would have been something in the press at the time, but there was not. It may, however, be that the eyewitnesses just got their dates wrong. I don't know about this one, but certainly the theory uh, is that it is something from Russia rather than from outer space. So, yeah. That's where that's well, what he that, goes. That that's, would that's... lead it to be uh, more reason for it to be covered up, wouldn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, so that's the Pankbridge cash. Give me one minute. I'll just uh, someone at the door. One second. Yeah. Keep them talking. A bit more. Uh, the Delta-shaped flying craft and stuff. I've been seeing reports from them saying that. It's all um, military black projects on using electromagnetic drives. And the problem with that is they have an EMP effect. So, you know, they say the thing like, oh, my watch stopped and the car stopped. It's like, yeah, yeah you, your car stopped because the uh, the anti-grav drive. Um, is that just... because they have to use like massive amounts of like electromagnetic energy then, is it? Well, one way I saw it, uh, it's like this guy had a coil and he plugged it into the electricity and so how does the copper wire. So I can get the cop. So I the can, copper wire. I can get that you get lit. the copper wire was like yeah. it was glowing red hot. That that was it, and it lifted off the ground. It, the the way it propel would be much like a helicopter does. The the rotors lift, but then when you angle them, you get a uh, forward and reverse motion. Oh, okay then, yeah. Yeah. So like a helicopter, yeah. you kind of tilt it, don't you? And then that kind of... You you just got to think of the glowing lights as, as the thrust vectors. If they go straight down, it goes up. If if it goes to the side, it, go, it goes back and forwards. Mm. Mm. But so, so how's it powered then? If you're using like massive amounts of electromagnetic energy like that, like how are you powering it? Oh. Uh, lithium ion batteries uh, recharged at Tesla's supercharge networks, and Greta Thunberg is the commander in chief. Yeah. Or the got, daughter. Uh, unless they've got Tesla's uh, little little Eiffel towers up and running. Well, yeah, no, they they they're using batteries made from responsibly sustainably sourced lithium mines. By sustainable, you mean you mean mined by children, the kind of thing that Greta, Greta approves of. Well, sustainably means like you know chopping children's fingers off to harvest chocolate, right? That's, yeah, I know what sustainable means. It means <laughs> it means do- tinned dolphin in my tuna. It means don't think about it. It means we put this word on so you don't have to feel guilty about buying it. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Yeah. It, oh, you, sorry about that. Are you still Just wrapping a, up? Um, yeah, let's wrap it. We can wrap it up there. That's pretty much covered it. No, I had a uh, a delivery there. To the, uh, the Tesco's was coming, but oh, yeah. Your, so your new dildos, your new dildos come as it in. Yeah, yeah. And those dildo has arrived. But you um, you do yeah. no dildos arrived, does it? Yeah, exactly. The man summers their latest. The right, Jill do you want to collection. talk about some scientists, Hobbit and Ian? Let's do I it. Can hate scientists. Charles no, Fort was going. These these people are described as scientists by the Mail. Uh, now woke researchers want to ban the word female. Full list of all twenty four harmful terms. Biologists uh, want. It's act. now birthing person egg carrier. <laughs> yeah, uh, the EEB Language Project has published a list of harmful terminology in science. The scientists have instead published a revised list of replacement terms. These are scientists, remember. I fucking love science. Uh, So, uh, female, invasive, and survival of the fittest. These are just three of the terms scientists now in Greek now argue to deserve to be banned. In a new crackdown on harmful terminology in science... Members of the Ecology Evolutionary Biology Language Project, founded by scientists in the US and Canada, have published a list of 24 harmful terms regularly used. 
deemed offensive, they've, in, it, they've instead suggested a revised list of replacement terms. Writing in the journal Trends in Ecology and Evolution, researchers said efforts to champion inclusive language in science is particularly important for the re redressing of ongoing marginalisation in many groups. So which 24 terms are in the, in the firing line? I feel marginalised by this. <laughs> well, you're not allowed to say you're not allowed to say paedophile anymore. Are you? It's it's minor attractive yeah. person. It, yeah, you can have the, set the, in the, P, the P in map stands for minor attractive paedophile. Right. Yeah. So, you know, alien, it's offensive. That's a alien, mm. non-native, exotic, or invasive. They're gone. They're gone. So the replacement term is non-endemic species, newly arrived species, mm. non-indigenous species, introduced species, or nuisance species. But you don't want to upset oh. the aliens, do you? you nuisance species. Aliens. No, that that's a bit. That's a problematic language. We can't call Pakistanis nuisance species. <laughs> blind, double blind, or plant blindness. Obviously, that's going to upset the blinds. So now it's awareness. So you're having an aware. So instead of a double blind study, you're having an awareness study or a awareness. St what? Citizen science is a harmful term. So citizen science is harmful to non-citizens who are excluded science. by that language. So now it's participant science or community community science. Mm. Uh, feminized or masculinized. Femi feminized implies that feminine and masculine are biological traits rather than social constructs. Describe the specific traits is the replacement term. Right, so, gypsy is a racial slur used to incite violence against Romani people. So now it's now it's the spongy moth instead of the gypsy moth. Uh, I can't do spongy moth. I can't do all twenty four because this is this is. Are we buffering? This is stupid. No, we're not. It's it's coming through fine. I'm just the subject matter is disgusting, and I feel uh, aggressed, microaggressed, and problematized against. So I'm sure that's a term. Oh, Indian is a discriminatory racist term used to describe indigenous people. So now they're indigenous. Um, I can't read it. Survival of the fittest is now natural selection or survival differences. Uh, instead of hermaphrodite, <laughs> instead of hermaphrodite, you're now monoecious. Intersex or bigametic. Fuck off. <laughs> Instead of primitive or... I'm not using these stupid newspeak terms. 1984 warned me about this. <laughs> Fuck off with your double speak in, in a party drivel. Fuck right off. I'm going to express all the negative and positive thoughts I want using the English language that God intended me to use. Uh, Fuck quit. <laughs> Discover or discovery obviously erases the long-standing detailed ecological knowledge of indigenous communities that have been involved with local environments and ecosystems before colonialism and Western sites. So now they're identified or described instead of discover or discovery. <laughs> uh, uh, harem has gone because that perpetuates offensive stereotypes of human cultures, particularly though, particularly those of the Middle East that evokes a sexualized human power structure in which women are assumed to be subjugated to men. And now it's a mating group or a polygyny. Uh, yeah. Reminder. Oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. Hobbit. Rape. So rape equates rape with a reprodu reproductive strategy rape. rather than... Than a violent and traumatic act, which can lead to dangerous misconceptions that it is natural behavior. Do they want to call it struggle snuggle instead? <laughs> it's a snuggle it's with called, a struggle. It's it's just forced copulation now, Hobbit. It's surprise sex. <laughs> it's surprise. You thought you weren't going to have sex today? Surprise. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that's that's. I fucking love science for this evening. Uh, Hobbit, 
Are you are you looking for a place? I think I've found the ideal place for you. Uh, is, is it uh, the Hobbiton? Uh, it, it's got a butt with it though. So Hobbit, you can have a nice. Um, when you're checking out a house or flat to rent, there are lots of things to look out for: bedroom size to natural light, and kitchen space. Last thing you expect to be included in the deal, deal, however, is a job as a cleaner and administrator for the mortuary downstairs, where you're expected to clean up after dead bodies. Hey, it's, <laughs> it's, it's this is in Swindon. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've I've been through Swindon enough times yeah. to know it's not my ideal place. It it's probably like um like like I don't like cities, and as cities yeah. go, Swindon is is one of the shit ones. Yeah, uh, you know you're going to upset our Swindon correspondent. No, I'm not because they live in Swindon, and you know I'm telling the truth. I'm not exaggerating it. Swindon is shit. <laughs> it's also covered in it's also covered in pigeon poo so you know <laughs> that's exactly what some households have stumbled across as they've taken to social media to share their shock at a right move listing in Swindon Wiltshire which comes with a pretty unusual caretaker job the apartment which boasts high ceilings and master bedroom is above Hillier Funeral Service in Swindon be comfortable with and, will, the dead. and will set back mm -hmm. the lucky tenant £600 of rent in month uh, pound of rent in month or, or per six hundred pound per in rent per month, but you will be able to make be able to make some of your money back through a ten pound ten ten pound ten per hour job downstairs. Well, at least your commute time's not much. The work appears to involve showing doctors to the deceased, conducting mourners on chapel visits, and wiping down the mortuary and fridges. <laughs> Yeah, there is a Honda car. Well, there used to be a Honda car factory, except that Honda moved out. Um, Honda exists in Swindon because they were collaborating closely with Rover. They were close to buying it up, and then the EU said, "Hey, BMW, can we um, can we do something else to put a further nail in the coffin of British industry? Can can you put a bid in for Rover and then promptly do fuck all with it and destroy another in British institution? And BMW says, well, we don't really want to do it. It's but like, Minis, but, but, Hobbit, um, but Hobbit, Minis have little Union Jacks as lights now. So BMW uh, were told by the EU, here's a bunch of money which we've taken from the British in their dues. And we're giving it to you so you can buy this British institution, then you can sell it and do whatever. It's basically free money to fuck with the British manufacturing. And BMW Fucking said, hell. yeah, all right then. Other normal care ta caretaking car tasks apply, with the new employee expected to empty bins, clear leaves from the car park and polish metal. Uh, the Mini is no longer a Mini, is it? Oh, isn't it? No, it's... Is that problematic it's language? It, it's big. Uh, out, hours, are a week, hours are on a week-on, week-off basis, with two and a half hours every evening, Monday to Friday, as well as working Saturday. So you've got to do that as well as your fucking job, have you? Uh, I'm at work. I, I, can't, I can't be there at work. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> One person wrote on Reddit, oh, yeah, I know, <laughs> wow, I'm sure this might be a good deal for someone with a very specific lifestyle, but working six days a week with only two weeks off a year to have what amounts to two hundred pound left over per month after paying the rep rent, that is an insanely bad deal. Yeah, you're not saying this job for me, frankly. Yeah. Even if it's only a couple of hours a day, I'd definitely expect expect to be rent free or at least extremely cheap. Edit. You also got to deal got us to deal with ghosts so it's even worse <laughs> fucking redditors yeah as 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 someone else said you have to pay to live at work above a mortuary misava would like that job yeah he'd uh, he'd get he'd get stuck in wouldn't he yeah
Dead air. Dead uh, air. Right. Uh, da, da, da. What else have we got in here? Uh, Where are you? Unexplained mysteries. We got uh, cut no, off, so I'm, I had to reboot. I'm in the back chat because I've got I found uh, a couple of other stories. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, oh, YouTuber. A YouTuber has been slammed, Hobbit. Did you want to do this one? No. Oh, is it the one that done did a murder and pretended like, oh, guys, I'm live streaming. It's a perfect alibi. <laughs> and then the forensic says, no, it's recording. Uh-huh. You done did a murder. No, you did that. I don't know. Just like someone's on YouTube and it's like, hey, watch me play Xbox. Oh, by the way, I've got problems with my chat, so uh, I'm not reading the chat. And he just said it like multiple times and it's just like, oh. yeah, okay, um, you're making it obvious now. You're a dickhead. Uh, I'm, how- d- I'm definitely live streaming this game and not murdering my girlfriend. Uh, Parallel. <laughs> Paranormal YouTuber slammed for taking Nicola Bully investigation into his own hands. Amateur investigators' videos come after comments from police, uh, friends of Nicola Bully and missing persons expert, expert were warning of the dangers of speculation. A YouTuber has faced backlash for capitalising on Nicola Bully's disappearance by filming himself at the scene where the mum of two went missing, ignoring repeated warnings from police expert and members of her family, Danny, who describes himself as a paranormal investigator, took several videos in the area near where Miss Bully vanished. Much of it filmed at night, during which he traipses around nearby undergrowth. While many commenters support his great job in helping the investigation, several pointed out he was not only contru- contributing little to the effort to find Miss Bully, was, but was profiting off the charity <coughs> and running the risk of destroying potentially useful... <laughs> evidence excuse me the content creator who is called exploring with danny on social media has shared several videos of his late night walks with his dog molly and pal felicity he's det- he's obviously been friend zone there really uh visiting derelict, derelict buildings and scouring bushes near where, where miss bully disappeared Lancashire police asked people not to take the law into their own hands and risk thwarting the investigation, while friends of Nicola have highlighted that armchair det- detectives and grief tourists were actively hindering the investigation. Meanwhile, a missing persons expert t- told the Express that if Miss Bully had been abducted, crowds of people and other amateur sleuths could provide a cover for, for potential criminal to intentionally destroy evidence or mislead police. Danny said he was there to do some paranormal stuff. He gaudishly attempted to contact Nicola using a so-called ghost scanner, implying she was dead despite the fact it's never been stated by police and her family remain hopeful that she may yet be found. He said if something has I happened... Think it, I think it's a good bet she's dead though, isn't it? Well, I don't yeah, think he's... It's really... been too long, isn't it? She's, she's not appearing any time soon. Uh... Uh, da, da. So, Danny then asks, Nicola, do you have a message for us? Did you fall in the lake? Do you need help? In another clip, he tries to get into a cobweb-covered building and second with a private li- private land sign. He said, I've searched, searched an abandoned house around the perimeter, the bushes, main roads, ponds and people's back gardens at night with torches. Residents of the local village are already told of being constantly disturbed by the tourists coming to the area to see where Miss Bully vanished. Danny has 205,000 YouTube subscribers. His videos are monetized, meaning he can run adverts on them and receive payment based on how many people watch them. So there you go. Nice. Uh, I'll bet you got anything from an explained mysteries you want to talk about? History. No. Tired. No, mood. Eeyore's, Eeyore's back. Kevin the teenager. <laughs> uh, You're not my real dad. I hate you. Yeah. Uh, anyway, stay spooky, people. Woo, spooky. Good night. Good night.